Really, man? Girl, you were scandalous, and I loved it. Yeah. Uh. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. I'm glad you guys are here. We got company today. Jazzy Faye is coming through, and so is CeeLo. CeeLo's daughter was on that um, MTV show, right? Yes. Oh, great. Love, fun time talking to him. Um, anyway, uh, and I did get a chance to see Get Rich or Die Trying over the over the weekend. Excuse me. So if you want to talk about that, whatever, whatever, whatever. The celebrities are still up to no good. Um, we're looking at the end of the Murder, Inc. empire. We can talk about that. Um... Mm, Jennifer Aniston's movie was released this weekend. If you guys saw that, do you finally think that maybe she made a movie that is going to take her into movie stardom as opposed to a bunch of flops that she usually makes? So, we're here. And we're queer. Get used to it. It is what it is, everybody. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Kiki Wyatt. What's up? This is Brenda K. Star. What's up? This is Mariah, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Oops, oops, oops. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Mm. Yeah, and here we go, everybody. Welcome to the show. How you do when all boy? Yeah, had a pretty decent weekend. Got a lot of um, rest done. Ascertained exactly who's coming over for Thanksgiving, and now it's time to execute where to get all the great food. I was reading something in the paper today about there's something wrong with turkeys, which, as far as I'm concerned, I have no problem with that because, tur- you know, like, big old dry, stupid looking, smelly, poisonous germs all around your kitchen after you touch everything and touch the turkey germs. As far as I'm concerned, cheeseburgers are great on Thanksgiving as long as you have um, the chicken livers wrapped in bacon and some good hors d'oeuvres, you know, all kind of dip and... Just maybe a, a dollop or two of caviar and some toast points. Do you know what I mean? Yep. I covered up a water spot. Just to, you know, a temporary fix to the bigger situation. Finished covering up a water spot and, you know, get a new roof in the spring. In the meantime, cover it up. We got company coming. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? I saw Get Rich or Die trying. Yep. I got the BL. I'm a little embarrassed to say it, so I'll just call it the BL. And uh, I watched it last night, as a matter of fact. 
And uh, it was what it was. I thought it was a pretty decent movie. The thing about that movie is that you have to, in order to really understand it, you either have to know the gangster ghetto mess that was going on during that time. You got to know the fat cat role. You got to know the preem role and all like that. Art, did you get a chance to see it? Yes. Did you know all the different roles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who played this person, that person, but disguised in the movie? Yeah. yeah you okay. Know. Did you see it in mixed company? Maybe, for instance, with a girl yeah. who who had to say, Artie, you know, who is, what's that? Who yeah. is it? Yeah. 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 Had to explain. Did, now, were you, um, were you losing patience because you had to explain? Or did you realize that, hey, if you, if you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had I didn't lose patience because I had to, but with her, cause yeah, her race, yeah. Now you're from um, Germantown. No, I'm not from Chestnut Hill. Wherever you're from, Philly, and so how did you know the the background of all the different players in the, in the game? I read Don's and Diva's magazine. Yeah, Don <laughs> Diva magazine that puts you right on. Is that? I was gonna say that's my knowledge through reading Don Diva magazine. Yeah. Uh, plus, I watched it with him, and and he always knows. Yeah. You know, so you know, I had like the first hand ghetto Quran with me. You know, sitting up there watching the movie, there like who that is. Yep. yep. <laughs> Why he's so mad? <laughs> For a second there, I started nodding, not because it was a bad movie, just because it was, you know, I had to wait until after Desperate Housewives. Stellar episode last yes. night. Stellar. Stellar. What? Just when that show proves to be a huge disappointment to me, boy, oh boy, they, they snap back. If you walked away from your TV in the last five minutes, you missed the best. I mean, it's the best. So then after Desperate Housewives, then I went to get my snack, and then we popped the um, the um, the BL in. Yeah, clear BL. Very clear BL. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we borrowed it from Don Ron, oh, oh, and he had already watched it. Oh, he knows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you say, Goose? These days. Yeah. yeah. BLs are always clear. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the telephone. See what you guys are talking about. Look, Kelly Price um, cut off all of her hair. Yes. And, you know, what a bold move, Kelly. But you know what? You look good. You know, I mean, as far as Kelly Price goes, and she says that she's going to be releasing her own, um, another CD soon. Uh, Hello? Hi. Hi, Wendy Williams. Welcome to the radio. Yes, it's Brenda Austin. Nice to have you here, Brenda. Yes. I was going to find out I was the winner. <laughs> oh, no. We're not giving anything away, Brent. Well, wait uh, a minute. What station do you listen to? Listen to? WBLS. Oh, no. Definitely not. Yes. No, we don't have anything to give away to you now. The winning is oh. at 525. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brent. Bye-bye. Oh. Yeah, here we have a little, um, we're, well, it's not little, actually. We have $107,000 that we're giving away. Um, hello? Hi. You got to turn your radio down. Shout out to Natalie at Jolie Magazine. That's that's Viv Fox's magazine. I got hey, the, Wendy. I got the second issue here. Hey, how you doing? Wait, hold on for just one second. All right. Doesn't the cover girl on the on the new issue of Z Jolie Magazine look like, who does that look like? <laughs> oh, my God. Tony look, Braxton? Yes. yes. This is Sierra. Oh, my God. It looks just oh like Tony Braxton, though, doesn't it? Yes. I love them both, so it doesn't even matter. Hi, how are you? Hey, Wendy, I love you. Thank you. I think you're like the best thing since like H2O. Uh, well, that, wow, that's big. Thank you. I really do. I'm trying to be the up and coming you. Like, I really want to be like you. You are like so decent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love you. I just had to tell you that. It doesn't matter. The boys want to be like me, too. Oh, <laughs> Art said you were a guy. Um, I'm on the in between. Okay. Are you, what do you talk or are you going to get removal? Um,. I don't really know yet. I'm so young. I'm only 19. Oh, 19. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're scandalous. Yeah. I was just calling to tell you I love you. Well, thank you for calling. Right. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Thank you for calling. Hello? Bye-bye. Hi. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Why don't people turn their radios down? Hello? 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 Hi. Hi, Wendy. Yes. Hi, this is Jewel, Wendy. How you doing? Stop with that mess that was just talking to you. <laughs> hi, June Bug. Huh? Hi. How you doing, girl? Listen, I went to this party this weekend, right? And the kids were hearing me on the radio chatting with you. And they all run up to me asking for your number. Oh, what's the number? What's the number? What's the number? And I said, honey, if you're not a, a religious um, believer, you ain't going to get through. You it's 866 get Wendy. Junebug just has a great luck. Every time you dial in, it seems like you get through. 
Thank you, June Vibe. And, and you know, the kids, they be, you know, they ask me this weekend, oh, can you give me Wendy? You know, I'm with this party, so I've been there for a minute. And I just want to give a shout out to my baby Tyson and my cousin Cal, because I went to her surprise birthday. So I got sitting, you know, the usual. All right, June Bug, take care. Okay, Miss Wendy, I'll talk to you later, girl. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Junebug was sounding quite muffled and absolutely terrible today. I didn't want to tell him, but Junebug, your phone, it sounded messy. Hello? Hello? Hi, turn your radio down. Hello? Oh, turn your radio down. All right, how you doing? I'm doing fine. It's Wendy. How are you? Hey, how you doing, Wendy? I've been trying to call you for a minute now. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. Okay. By the way, girls, I have a new website for us to go to if you wear um, up to a size 11 shoe. And I think you're really going to like this website. They've got some really nice um, stuff here. Um, handbags with um, tool trimming and, and stone buckles and large satchels and mini frame bags. But they also have shoes to match. Um, equally fabulous. They go all the way up to a size 11. Kathy Van Zealand.com. K-A-T-H-Y-V-A-N-Z-E-E-L-A-N-D. Kathy Van Zeeland.com. And everything is done in small letters and we're all scrunched together. Kathy Van Zeeland.com. K A T H Y V A N Z E E L A N D.com. Real nice stuff and, and economically priced. So, well, how can I help you, sir? Yeah, well, I'm curious to know. I heard that um, Eddie Guerrero died. Is that true? That who? Eddie Guerrero. Already died. Is that true? Oh, I haven't heard that. <coughs> Who is Eddie Guerrero? He's a wrestling WWE. Is, oh yeah, that's the guy. He, yes, he did die. Get out. Yes, he was found dead. Uh, listen, they 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 didn't they didn't have find any drugs in his system or anything like that. He was late for a match. I think he was in Chicago. And they went to his hotel room, you know, an emergency entrance, and there he was, dead. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's wrong. Well, Marty, stop. Well, you know what? Look in today's Daily News, as a matter of fact. Do you, are you in New York? Yeah, I'm in New York. Yeah, look in today's New York Daily News. But you know what? I'm sure that they have it, like, in other newspapers also, the sports section. All right, I'll look at that, Winnie. Thanks. Oh, thank you very much. Love your show, baby. Lo and, yes. yes. How you doing? How you doing? Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Later. Art, you never got the people poll results from Are You Sleeping With Three or More People? It's 93.3 here. No. 93% of people said yes? No, no, they said no. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah, they did. Are you sleeping with three or more people? 93% of you all said no. And 7% of you all said yes. I, I can believe that. 7% of people sleeping with three or more people? It's hard to maintain that kind of lifestyle these days, you know. It is? Yeah. And then this... AIDS. Art, is it hard to maintain that kind of lifestyle? I, I heard it was difficult, but I heard it's also, you know, doable. Well, there's five people in the room. We'll just take another survey. Raise your hand if you're sleeping with three or more people. Oh, there's somebody in the room who never disappoints. I'm not going to even look in that direction or say person's sex or name. I'm not even going to get a Tourette's moment. It's Elisa. Brand new. <laughs> oh! Oh, Here she oh, is. Oh, Sleeping with three or more yeah. people. I'm yeah. just playing. <laughs> Today's we The Wendy Williams Experience People Poll question. Or, I don't like this question. Do you make a bowel movement at least once a day? <laughs> I don't. You don't? Oh. What? No, I don't. Ew. See? No third input for her. Ew. <laughs> Wendy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Are you unsure about your Medicare prescription insurance? Well, your friendly and knowledgeable Walgreens pharmacy staff can answer your questions or ask for the Show Me Guide. It's full of great information and even has examples on how Medicare prescription insurance can help you save. These benefits will take effect January 2006, but you'll have to make some important decisions before then. So stop by Walgreens for information about the Medicare prescription insurance. Many choices. One solution. Walgreens. WBL. 
Yes. You're calling number 10? Oh, my God. Guess what? <laughs> you just picked up your share of the money. You just picked up $1,000. I got to pull over, girl. I'm driving. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You could be our next winner. Well, I'm glad that we've made life a little easier for you, Bert. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let everybody know the only radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. I love 107.5 WBLF. Yeah. Yeah, your next chance to win, everybody. It's later on today. 525 with the Wendy Williams Experience. You listen for Steve Harvey to say, it is now time to call. And then you call, and um, we'll give you 1000 bucks. That'll be your share in our $107,000 cash guarantee. Also, don't forget about the WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose. It's happening on December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis, which is at 45th Street and Broadway. Okay, there's going to be live entertainment a full holiday buffet, and get your tickets now at Ticketmaster. A lot of fun, including um, Jaheem's performing, Don L. Jones. 212-307-7171. The proceeds of our Christmas party with a purpose this year benefit the anti-domestic violence programs, Safe Horizon, and Day One. So get your tickets now at Ticketmaster, and we'll see you on December 17th. Let me talk to you about Benjamin Rugg and Home Love them. Benjamin Rugg and Home. Love them. Have gone there for my personal life. Um, they're now clients of the radio station. And they have provided um, some fantastic furniture uh, in, in our office here. I just love it. Once it, you know, all gets... We actually are... We need to get our carpet clean. The BLS carpet clean before the Benjamin Rugg and Home rug gets laid down. So right now everything's kind of upside down and on top of each other. But... I will tell you this. When you stop by Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, which is located in Secaucus, New Jersey, you will see, first of all, wholesale prices in a retail store. That's number one. The Martha Stewart Signature Gallery they have. They just launched the owner, uh, Stephanie Cohen. She owns the place, you know, with her husband, Benny. Stephanie Cohen has her own furniture line. Fabulous stuff. Really different, really incredible. And once again, wholesale prices. The selection of rugs at Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, I'm going to tell you, is bar none. The best. The best. And guess what? If you don't see it, how about they do it up for you? <laughs> exactly. Like, like the Burger King of rugs. Have it your way. <laughs> have it your way. I'm going to give you the telephone number. And I wanted to talk to you also about um, what's on the second floor. On the second floor is the traditional, um, the excuse me, the classic gallery. And then the first floor, when you first walk in, is the traditional contemporary gallery. I've been all over the place, but I'm a traditional contemporary girl more so than anything else. So I like to stay downstairs. And I got to tell you, when you're ready to stop buying this furniture with pressed wood and just, you know, grow up a bit in terms of your taste for your house. I mean, whatever you like, you like. But I'm just saying, you know, this is good stuff. It's quality furniture at affordable prices. Quality rugs at affordable prices. I'll give you their address, 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Yeah, exactly. Right in the same area as the legendary Secaucus outlets. Just another place to shop in Secaucus. Great prices. 20 Meadowlands Parkway. I'll give you their telephone number. 201-617-9000. I'll give you the store hours and the web address. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're even open Sundays, noon to 5 p.m. You can go to the website, stephaniecohen.com. Take a look before you go in. Fabulous stuff. I wouldn't just tell you this. By the way, they're excited. They have a new financing offer, 12 months, no payment, no interest. On top of already great prices. You got people coming in for the holidays. Maybe you're thinking of doing something different with your house. Tweaking, getting something, whatever. It's not too late. Call the people. Go into the showroom. It's Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. I'm not sending you to a place I've not visited and purchased myself. 201-617-9000. StephanieCohen.com. It's Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. Secaucus, New Jersey. Thank you. No. I mean, thank you. I mean, He's thank out. you. <laughs> Life of the Rock, time to shake it up and re mimic, re mimic your world. Be remix. Yo, so this is the flow, this is, this is the songstress. And you're listening to the Wendy Williams experience. And we're not gay. Truly, Wendy, I, I, I know you're interested, but we're not. Uh oh. 
And here we are. The Wendy Williams experience, everybody. Um, I, I, I guess I've been under a rock. I did not realize that Monica Arnold, friend to the show, had her baby. Baby's name is Rodney Ramon the Third, aka Rock. Now I have not been able to ascertain exactly who Monica's baby's father is, but um, a beautiful baby. You know, she says that she wants four more kids. Um, she said that when she was on her way, to, like she wasn't sure, you know, if what the labor pains felt like. She was on the phone with a friend, like with a friend of hers. She was like, "Ooh, something feels strange in my back." So she um, she got dressed and she took a shower. And she drove to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, she stopped at the soul food place that she loves. And she got her turkey wings, rice, and collard greens and yams. And then she went to the hospital. She was in labor, uh, she said, for like 12 hours. She was in labor for uh, quite a few hours. And then she delivered the baby. And it, see, murder's not the father. That's her ex-boyfriend. But he's happy that that she's now a mother because he feels as though nobody could be a better mother than her. But I have... Who is Monica's baby's father? I don't know who Rock is. I'm just trying to figure out. But you know, Rock, uh, Monica's always loved like a guy on the block. So probably, you know, one of them block huggers there in Atlanta. I don't mean that in a bad way. Shout out to all the guys on the block. I just mean, you know, I, I don't picture him being like a show busy type guy, whoever Rock is. Oh, you know what I have for you? I have a terrific Christmas gift to get for somebody. And I know I'm a little bit early with this, but this is the kind of gift that, depending on who your friends are, they would love it. It's a pictorial of the history of male cross-dressing in movies. It's a perfect coffee table book, and it's 65 bucks. And it's celebrating the spirit of burlesque with an encyclopedia of survey um, from the last 90 years of film and follies. There are 700 photographs from Buster Keaton to Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis, Johnny Depp, Robin Williams, the whole bit. And the book is called Ladies or Gentlemen, a pictorial history of male cross-dressing in movies. So, I, I mean, I think that would be a great Christmas gift for somebody, you know. I love coffee table books. They say Fat Joe's coming out with a new television show. Are you aware of this? Well, he's coming out with a new TV show. They say it's sort of like Everybody Loves Raymond. But wouldn't that be like Everybody Hates Chris? No. Well, anyway, it's about his life, and he's going to be acting in it. Oh. And uh, Eve's manager, Troy Carter, is going to be the executive producer. Of course. They're writing scripts right now, and they'll probably start shooting, they say, in January. Shooting what? I would imagine shooting a pilot. Yeah. <clears throat> so nothing's done until the pilot gets picked up. But okay. Well, all righty then. Hello. Let's go to the phone. I'm sorry, Goose. Hello. Hi. It's Wendy. You're on the radio. Hello. 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 Hi. You're on the radio. Hi. Good morning. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Um, my friend Alex is so going to kill me because she wanted to give you the info. Okay. What info? Hello. Wendy. Yes. Alex, is this you? No, this is not Alex. Okay, well then you give me the info. What info? Okay, um, uh, you know on Friday everybody was calling and telling you about um Jay Z oh, and Free supposedly yeah. supposed to be pregnant. Oh, um, um, her friend. No, that that free thing sticks. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That all right? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Her friend, um, Alex's friend, uncle is a police officer, and he escorted Jay Z into a Brooklyn hospital. Okay. So I'm so guessing that this is true. He, you know, you said he escorted Jay Z. You didn't say anything about who he was with. The rest of the story is. You mean what? The story is Jay Z and Free. No, that's you know, not what Free. you said. Okay, so your the police officer escorted Jay Z and Free into the hospital, and Free is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you know what? And it sounded so crazy um, on Friday, I know, and our dramatic effects and the sound effects uh, don't help any in the craziness. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, Free is pregnant. And that, that, that you know, I, I am watching, you know, what happens with Beyonce. I don't know anything about Beyonce being pregnant, but Free is pregnant with Jay-Z's child, apparently. I, I thought she had the baby on Friday. Mm-mm, I'm not going with that. I, no? I, I, don't, I don't know anything about that part. Oh, so you don't want to speak on it? No, I don't know anything about it. I believe Free is pregnant. I don't believe she had the baby. She will be having a baby. Uh, no, I don't believe she had a baby on Friday. Because Free, first of all, was seen out. And I have the pictures from a party about, um, it was back in October, and Free's belly was still flat. Now, she could be pregnant and still have a flat belly. Look at Gabrielle Solis last night, you know, on the right. show. You know, Gabrielle only had a little piece of boop, you know, could still fit into low-rise but jeans. But she's a slim person. Like, Free, if Free was pregnant, you would know. Well, maybe not in the first uh, month or two. Oh. Uh. I don't believe she had the baby on Friday. I do believe she's pregnant, though. Oh well, thanks a lot, Wendy. Well, tell me what your what your cop friend uh, said. Did he say that Free was on the gurney, stretched out, you know, ready to? No, the cop the cop friend didn't know. He just he just told he just escorted Jay Z into the hospital through the back of the with hospital. Free. Don't stop just saying Jay Z. The important part. Who cares about Jay Z? He was he was with Free, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was with Free, right? No, actually, he wasn't with Free. Okay, I have to go. Okay. Okay, bye. Hello? I don't believe Free delivered a baby on Friday. I do believe Free is pregnant. Uh, you all, for the record. Hello? Hi. Wendy. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Listen. Okay. I don't want to call you out. But well, then, I have a question. Then hold on. I have a question. Then hold on for a second because, oh. um, yeah, we're getting ready to go into the break. <sighs> I just figured maybe it was a call out on the whole Jay-Z and Free and Beyonce. I'm so not trying to go there today. I saw the E! News over the weekend. And I thought that um, Beyonce didn't look stressed. She looked like Beyonce when she was on Oprah. And I, I've always thought her mother is really pretty. Um, despite all the stress that Matthew Knowles has brought into her life. Um all right, keep it here. Advice hours next. Yeah. My boyfriend and I have been dating for like about four months now. And first time we had sex, he could not get it off at all. Maybe it's drinking. Is he a drug user? Does he take any depressants or anything? No, nothing. Maybe it's for you too. 7.5 WBLS New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jenny guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She's made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, what's going on? This is Andre Benjamin or Andre 3000, whatever you want to call me. Hey, yo, 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 this the Yin Yang Twins. What up, what up? It's your boy, Young Jeezy. You already know, man. You're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yes, sir. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. Advice I'm out. having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm-hmm. Right. It's advice hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience. And before we get started, I like to take time when I have something good for you. Um, I like to call this part Wendy's Medical Minute. And I just mentioned the other week, Goose, I don't know whether it was to you. It was somebody here at this radio station regarding, they, they asked me if I was thirsty while I was eating. And I said, no, I don't eat until after or drink until after I finish eating, generally speaking. Uh, for me... 
it's not about health issues. It's about I don't like to come up for air until the plate's finished. I mean, that's terrible, but that's that's how it is. I don't like to linger over my food. I like to, you know, <laughs> scarf it, drink, and then move on to the next thing. But here's why you should not drink with food. It turns out there's a medical thing going on. Drinks. We'll talk about water. Water interferes, they say, with the digestive process by diluting your enzymes and making it, well, difficult for the food to break down into liquid form so that it's usable in the rest of your body. And then colon specialists say that they've seen clients with really healthy diets doing all the right thing, eating all the right things, but... They still have a problem digesting food because, guess why? They were drinking too many fluids with their meal. Artie, was that you I was speaking with about that, that mm-hmm. I don't like to drink while I eat? Mm-hmm. Simply because simply I like to scarf, but it turns out there's a, there's a medical reason. And so they say to resolve that problem, drink two or, two or three glasses of water, um, you know, two hours before you eat your meal, and then drink something afterwards. Sounds good. Do you drink while you eat? No, I wait till afterwards. The most I'll do is maybe sip on something. And that's only if I'm in mixed company and for some reason I have to linger over this damn food, you know, meal. Otherwise, I'm a scarfer. We know. (laughs) I know you guys have seen my table manners. All right, so let's go to line one because Davida is in Delaware and her boyfriend's female friend keeps calling. Davida? Yes. Okay, how long have you guys been together? Hello? Yes, how long have you been? Why are there two of them in here as opposed to people on the phones? All right. Oh, let me turn Get your girls here. together. You don't know how to do it? All right, let me do it. Hello, Davida? Hello, Wendy? Hi. Hi, Wendy. I need some advice. Okay. All right. My name is Anonymous, but... I, are you in okay. Delaware? Yes. So your name is Davida? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. you told. I'm so happy you told. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, Wendy, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I have feelings for my lover's friend. Oh, your boyfriend's female friend. A lover. Wait, uh, your lover. Okay, so it's not your boyfriend. No, no, it's a lover. All right, do you have a boyfriend? No, I don't have a boyfriend. Okay, so a lover. Got you. Yes. Well, I have feelings for my lover's friend. Mm-hmm. And I went to this sex club, and it almost, we almost did something. But we didn't. Okay. And now I'm all messed up. I don't know what to do. I need some advice. Is your lover? Because now I'm looking at this person that way. Okay, is your, is your lover male or female? My lover is a female. And is the person that you're feeling a female? Yes. And you mentioned a sex club. Is this something that is normal, like, in your repertoire of activities? Yes, yes it is. Well, I mean, all signs point to nobody, nobody is in a relationship with anybody, and you will all have that freak streak in you because you go to, and that's no disrespect, I'm just saying. Yeah. You go to a sex club, so w- why all of a sudden are you catching, you know, the morals? Because, I mean... Are you because, in love with your lover? Um, I'm not in love with my lover, no. Not anymore. Well, this is not your girlfriend, so you can stop sleeping with her and move on to her friend if you'd like. I can do that, and that would be okay? It wouldn't be okay in normal life, but, I mean, considering that you all go to sex sex clubs and things like that. Yeah, you're right. Do, I mean, you know, exactly. So just do me? Yes. Oh, I love you, Wendy. I think you are fabulous. Thank you, Davida. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too, Wendy. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. And Betty is online, too, and wants to know if she should leave her man. I'm sorry? <laughs> Betty? Yes. Is this you? Yes. All right. You want to know if you should leave your man? Yeah. Well, uh, give me a little background. How long have you been with him? Um, I've been with him for about four and a half years, and it's going on five years. We don't live together. Do you have kids? No. No kids. We both don't have any kids. Mm-hmm. And um, we're both we're both the same age, 26, mm-hmm. and, you know, everybody around me is getting married, yeah. and I'm just... I don't know if I should, you know, continue and wait for him because he says he wants to marry me, but he's like, he doesn't want to be pressured in terms of time. Well, you know, hey, pressure worked for um, being Barry Will. Wait, wait who's, who's that um, on VH1? 
that show, the Brady, my fair Brady. Yeah. Pressure worked on that girl. That girl pressured him, and then he said okay. No, um, but I don't want to pressure him. I wanted I want him to do it on his own terms because well you know how some relationships end during that time. But right. I like her approach. Why don't you, um, well, you already don't live together, so no. that's a good thing. Yeah. So just say that the relationship is over. You can't be with somebody for four years and then all of a sudden say, I think we should have an open relationship and start dating other people. That's not going to work. Okay. What you have to do is just end it. He's, but, I mean, he's such a good person and... You know, like, I don't but know. But you explain to him that, that you know, you you want to move towards marriage. Mm-hmm. And you don't know how much more time you can spend with him without marriage at least being talked about in full. And honestly. But we talk about marriage, right? He just doesn't want to, like, I'm focused on terms of timing. You know, I want to be married like before I'm 30 you know what I mean and he's like you know it could be next year well, but you're it only could be five years from now you know like well you're only 26 so why don't you give him another year okay ask him what you need to do to make him feel or what it is that he needs maybe he needs to make more money with his job maybe he needs another promotion maybe he needs more education under his belt maybe you need to become a better cook maybe you need to get give up you know more sex I mean let you know talk honest and real okay you know what is the what what do, what do you need to work on to make him understand that you're the woman for him? Because you've been together for four years already. Right. Mm. I don't know whether you should leave him or not. I don't know the relationship. Only you can answer that. But okay. um, I mean, we have no problems in the relationship. There's like nothing I can say. Oh, I can't stand. So you then know, you'd you'd be abandoning a perfectly good relationship because you right. want to get married before thirty, but you're only twenty six. <laughs> Right. So, slow down, Sally. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I, I would still have that relationship uh, talk with him in terms of what you can do, what what needs to be done, and so on and so forth. But slow down. You're only 26. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm a little nervous. Tim is on the phone, and he's on line number four. And his girlfriend thinks he's getting professionals. I don't know what that means. Tim, help me. Hello? I don't know what that means. What do you mean? Your girlfriend thinks you're getting professionals from somebody? Yeah, she thought that one of her, her girlfriends that she knew gave me a professional, and they really didn't. Uh, you can be honest with me, Tim. Uh, they really didn't. So why would your girlfriend think that? It's crazy. I mean, the whole situation looked like it did, but it really didn't. You were sitting down, and she was on her knees between your legs, and no, your no, girlfriend no. walked in the room? <laughs> We we was at my girl's cousin's house. Okay. And my girl went and took her sister home. Okay. She came back. She mm-hmm. knocked on the door. I didn't hear her. When she came again to knock on the door, I came out. But the girl was upstairs with another girl. So, you know what I mean? She thinks that the girl did me and really didn't. But why a professional as opposed to the full-blown sex act? Oh. Uh, that's because that's like one of my favorite things. Oh. Well, you're no different than any other man. <laughs> well, I mean, you know... Um, I've been with this girl for a year. I really love her. I mean, this is the first relationship that I've been in that I haven't cheated. Yeah. And I just don't know what to do. Well, I don't want to leave her. I don't want to lose her. I spend, wanna spend, spend time with her. You know, take her out for dinner if you have a few extra dollars or cook something for her. You know, bring her, you know, incidental things like flowers. I mean... And show her attention, 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 while not sweeping this incident under the rug. But, you know, bringing it up and reminding her, you know, don't act like you're scared of the incident if you didn't do anything. Right. You know, I want you to understand, baby. I want you to understand, you know, by the way, you want to go for dinner? I want you to understand. Ooh, baby, baby. Ooh. You and know, this is, the, this is the thing, though. We're still together. We yeah. woke up for one day. Yeah. But she won't give me a professional now. She'll come back around. I mean, she'll come back around. She knows that's your favorite thing. I mean, give it a give it a rest. When did all this happen? It's, it's been going on for like two months. She hasn't given me oh. one. That's about oh. two and a half months ago. Oh. I don't know what to tell you. And you I don't, don't know what to tell me. No, I don't, on, I don't know what to tell you. I Look, I don't profess to excuse me or 
I don't profess to be a professional. I just listen to you all's situations and I try to give you the, my best um, answer. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Other than, you know, time will heal. She might not forget. And she's probably feeling inadequate because she probably feels that you got the best professional of your life upstairs oh. while she was taking her sister home. Right. You understand? Yeah, I got you. So now the onus is on you to make her feel as special and as beautiful and as as skilled as you possibly can. One, excuse my friends, but you you are the bomb, baby. Well, thank you very much, Tim. And I love you and thank 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 you very much. And I wish you well. Uh, hopefully, you'll be back in business tonight. Kevin, Kevin's a lucky man. Well, well, I try to tell him. <laughs> I mean, you know. Bye, bye, baby. Bye, bye. And if you can understand what I'm saying through it all, I'm a lucky woman. Yes. You know what I mean, Art? Yes, I do. Like, like through it all. Yes. I'm a fortunate woman. I ran into somebody this weekend at Whole Foods who got Botox for their armpits, and she said that she got it because I was talking about Botox. She sweats like crazy underneath her arms. She said, I'm going to tell you something. This is a woman of a certain age, 52, 52. She says, Wendy, I got Botox under my arms because I heard you talking about it on your show. We're at Whole Foods uh, looking at the arugula. She says, she sweats like crazy. The holidays are coming. She doesn't want to be up under embarrassing situations. <coughs> She's she says sometimes you go into people's houses, they're way too hot. Sometimes you, you're shopping in the mall and you know, you're, you're ruining the lining of your jacket. You're sweating like crazy. You're in church, whatever. She can't deal with it anymore. So she went to her dermatologist and got Botox, which is a wrinkle relaxer. But it also is um, used to disable sweat glands. Disables them. Under your arms, the palms of your hand, the soles of your feet, your groin. Where are you perspiring? Where is there just too much moisture <laughs> being trapped? <laughs> Check out your dermatologist. Check out your Botoxologist and ask them about Botox. I was so flattered. The woman came up. She said, Wendy, look. She took her coat off. She said, you know, I used to not be able to shop with my coat on. I'd be, you know, messing her. She said, look. <laughs> wow. I said, what? She said, look, look, look. I'm like, lady, I don't know you. What used to be there that's not there anymore? She said, it's dry. It's dry. Oh, yes. I got Botox under my arms. I said, wow, thank you. Okay. You can go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com and answer our people poll question. Friday's poll question was, are you sleeping with three or more people? 7% of the audience sadly said yes. 93% of the audience said no. The new one is... Do you make a bowel movement at least once a day? Yes or no? Oh. <laughs> man. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra, and right now you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. So keep it locked right here and don't go nowhere. Oh, thank you, Sierra. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, where this hour of the show is being brought to you by BET's Remix. Also, um, don't forget to listen every day for your chance to pick up your share of our $107,000 in our cash guarantee. I've got 1000 bucks for you. The next time for the winning is later on today, about 525. And then, of course, in the morning, 715 with the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And again at 1215 with Mark Jordan. So, this coming Thursday which will be November 17th. I'm hosting this really cool event for Steve Madden, the shoes are. He is the shoes are. Because at the end of the day, if you want a great look at an affordable price, Steve Madden is the place to be. Everybody from all three Destiny's Child, Queen Latifah, you, your neighbors, me, some women think that they're above and want to do not want to deny, but I'll be the first to say I love Steve Madden shoes. I do. I do. Well, on Thursday, November seventeenth, me and Steve Madden. Actually, I'll be hosting it for him um, at six o'clock in Juniors on Four Macy's Herald Square. That'll be your chance to meet Steve Madden and enter to win 
some great prizes while supplies last. Exactly. This Thursday from 6 p.m. to probably like 8 p.m. I'll be getting there a little bit after 6 o'clock. I have the bonus hour, you know. So I'll probably do like the first half of the bonus hour and then we'll play something special for the second half or something. Anyway, um, that's on Thursday at 6 o'clock. Junior's on 4, 6 o'clock. I'll see you on Thursday, okay? And you can meet Steve Madden and enter to win prizes. And plus, I can see you there, okay? Macy's Herald Square, that's the place to be. This coming Thursday, this coming Thursday, my friends. This coming Thursday at 6 p.m. Junior's on 4. Don, Don's and Diva's extravaganza is really heating up. Um, and what I've learned about the place where it's going to be... You'd probably be better off having a car for that night because um, the parking in the general vicinity is, well, you'd be trekking a bit. It's in Manhattan. But, you know, sometimes when you get, I can't even say the part of town. That's part of being fabulous. What? Nobody hears That's you. That's part of being fabulous. You know, make it happen. Get a car service. Y- y- yes. It's, fa- it's the Dungeons and Divas. What are you talking about? Make it happen. Well, I can tell you one thing. Um, if you're remotely thinking about being different and wearing, say, red to the all-black affair, you won't get in. And I'm sorry. I know what you're thinking. Let me be different. No. It's the black party, yes. and everybody's wearing black. Um, but you won't get in. It's going to be December 22nd. Trey Songs is performing. Ooh. Mary J. Blige will definitely be in the building as our host. You know, more surprises to come. Um, we got five hours of open bar. We got some great sponsors, including Demetrios Fur, B&B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey, Ray Zach, Courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx, Fat Cribs International, what? shout out to Mickey and the crew on 145th in Harlem, Armadale Vodka, you know, two shots up to Seagram's. Thank you, Seagram's. Shout out to Helen. Thank you, Seagram's. Hey, Helen. So, once again, that's five hours open board. It's the black party, everybody. And it's going to be on December 22nd. The ultimate party. Um, all kind of treats. It's a grown and sexy affair. I'm going to give you the official website. Actually, it's not a website. It's an email address. But you email with a question, and they will email you back. Um, there are going to be a limited amount of tickets to be sold. And... Um, at this particular time, I can't tell you where those tickets are going to be sold, but I can tell you that it's not going to be Ticketmaster, you know. But you can email if you have any questions regarding the Dons and Divas extravaganza to Dons, D-O-N-S, and, that's A-N-D, Divas, D-I-V-A-S, 2005, at Yahoo.com. Dons and Divas at 2005, ya- at Yahoo.com. Okay? So you email and... um You'll get emailed back, and I look forward to seeing you at um, the big extravaganza on December 22nd. Big shout-out to Question Mark Entertainment and Face Down Entertainment. It's the place to be whole. Also, shout-out to LB Graphics on 53rd Street. Ooh. No, no, you're what's good, LB Graphics. <laughs> yeah. All right, you know what? It's still advice hour, but we should probably continue so we can play. What, do you have some more commercials to play or something, Goose? No. No okay. more spots. Okay, so play a little music and then then we'll um, deal with more advice hour, okay? All right, keep it where you got it, everybody. It's 107.5 WBLS. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy, Wendy Williams. All right, everybody. Advice hour is still on. And I am going to line number four. Oh, how ironic is this? Hi, Kevin. Hey, Wendy. How's it going? So I understand you're not getting along with your girlfriend's mother. No, no, no. My mo- my girlfriend is not getting along with my mother. So oh. Really, my mother's not getting along with my girlfriend. Oh, well, okay. How long have you and your girl been together? A little over a year now. Mm-hmm. Do you live at your house with your mother? No, I moved out. I live with my girlfriend now. Okay, okay. And why don't these two women get along? I have no idea. My old- mother doesn't like her because, like, she says, my girlfriend's on Section 8. And, like, my mother says she needs to get a job. You, you know, she gets jobs on and off, but she really hasn't kept them for a long time. Okay. But that's, well. like, my mother's only gripe with her. My mother keeps saying that she needs to get a job. She needs to get a job. And, you know, my girl tries to, you know, be cool with her and whatnot. But my mother keeps, like, shutting her down. Okay. Are you your mother's only child? 
No, I'm a, I'm a last child, though. Okay. So you're the youngest. Yeah. You're her baby boy. Sure am. Are you formally educated? Yeah. I mean, I see your mother's point. Yeah. On one hand... But on the other hand, just because she's on Section 8 or whatever, it doesn't mean that, you know, she's a, a, a bad person. No, she's not um, no and she attempts to get jobs, so clearly she's not lazy. Now, why is it that your girlfriend gets jobs and loses them? Uh, like, she might, like, she might get, like, in a little dispute at the workplace. Oh, cursing somebody out. <laughs> not really like that. A dispute. You're tr- you call it what you want. <laughs> dispute, argument, whatever. I just want them to get along, really. Well, you realize that your girlfriend today could be your wife tomorrow. Can you deal with that kind of consistent inconsistency at your house regarding yeah. the monthly budget? I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, yeah. With her getting jobs and losing jobs and getting jobs. I'm pretty and- sure she'll get one and keep one. Okay, okay. Well, then keep your mother out of it. I mean, why does your mother have to be a part of it? If you, if you go all well, don't live together, then, then, you know. You're right, Wendy. I mean... It's not, it's not your mother's business. And if anything, you're supposed to be the one, Kevin, to man up and create a buffer between these two women. Yeah. How old are you? 22. Yeah. Still young enough to be mommy's baby boy. <laughs> All right. It's up to you to show your mother that you're not her baby boy anymore. Oh, hold on one second. My girlfriend's right here. Oh, please. Hello, Wendy. Hi. His mother is evil. I have never met another... It's not even a fact of me, you know, getting jobs and not keeping jobs because I've had my own place before I met him and he moved in with me. Mm. I was fine before him. I think it's more of the issue of he's been taking care of her and now... Yo, know, she, now he's going to split the money with you. Yeah. And, and your your money is sometime because you got Section 8. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I When think, are you going to keep a job? Well, actually, I've had a job for three years. It's just that I moved from New York to Connecticut. Oh, okay. He made yeah. it sound like you were getting fired from jobs for arguing with people. No, I had a job for three years. It's just that I moved out no. of state. Okay. And, you know, it's been hard. Well, it's I told iffy. I told him that he has to um, step up and be more of a man so that, the, so that you... Him. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and thank and you, for, thank you now, for calling. Oh, okay. All right, bye-bye. Because that was the issue at hand. It says right here on the computer, mother and daughter not getting along, or mother and girlfriend. So Cindy is a live-in nanny, and guess what? She's on line two. She's being beaten by her boss. Cindy? Hi, Cindy. I've been trying to call you for months. I can't believe I got I finally got you. Cindy, you don't mean beaten like spanked or beaten like beat down? How do you mean? I mean beaten like slapped in the face, pulled bread, sent to the doors in the house. No. And on July 6th, she finally did the big one where I was beaten, pushed off the porch, down the porch, missed wow. all the steps, hit my back, fell on my back. She came down, she kicked me. Wow. She called me, you effing nigger, wow. want you off my property. Wow. You're nothing but an undocumented nigger, nigger this, nigger that. Beating all the wall, pushing, kicking, punching. This is what she did. Um, how did you get this job? I got this job through an agency in Manhattan. And so... They my number to my former bosses. And they fired you since then, right? You don't work for this boss anymore? Well, she did. She didn't get a chance to fire me. I just, I, after the beating and the police were called, mm. it was over then. Okay. So, what's your question to me? Okay. I wanted you to help me with getting, like, letting people know, know what happened to me because she went to, she was arrested. Two, the police took two days before they would arrest her. Mm. And when I called the 911 for help... The police came and I was lying on the sidewalk. Yeah. I was still there because I had passed. I had hit my head and passed. Oh so then she God. finally pushed me. And the officer, as soon as they got there, she told the police, she's illegal. And the, the police ignored me. There was a witness there and trying to get tell them what happened to me. And I was trying to talk to them. The police paid me no attention. Yeah. They just made sure that my boss, they did what she wanted, which was she wanted me away from the property. And she went to court. She got 50 hours of community service for everything she did to me. Wow. She got 50 hours of community service, one anger management class. Are you an illegal? I, I, yes, I am out of status right now. Mm. So I, I don't understand. What is it that you want? What question did you want me to answer? Okay. This, um, 
I recently found out that she she could have been they should have charged her with a hate crime. Right. And they were then they didn't charge her with a hate crime. They just charged her with plain assault. And I've been I've had um, I've actually started to get help now from um, a, a, a radio based ministry here yeah. on Long Island. Yeah. And they've been um, doing demonstrations um, at the court and over at her house here in Massapequa, mm -hmm. Massapequa Park to get the, 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 the authorities to charge her with the hate crime that she should have been charged with because they gave her 50 hours of community service that I, I, I don't believe she's doing any of it. No, she probably isn't. No, because she's got a lot of strings that she, that she can pull here. Yeah, and, and I, yeah I was going to say, she probably has strings that she can pull and get the yes. community service wiped away. I don't know what it is that I can do to help you in your situation um, other than you know, wish you well. I mean, Cause it, I just want people to know, Wendy, that when, when when they hear about nannies, it's usually when the exactly. nannies exactly nanny did something wrong. I was going to say sometimes the employers here, need to be checked out also because I know that there's some abuse that goes on that yeah. way. We get they treat us like they, mm. we we do everything for them. Yes. This woman when she rolls out of bed in the morning, Wendy, she has she, she is not. I, I do I do everything for her except give her a bath. Wow. She, I, she has nothing to do. I do everything. The children, the house, the pet, everything. Uh, how, let me ask you, how much were you getting paid? 300 a week. You've got to oh be kidding God. me. I was living. I was living. I come in at 6.30 on a Monday morning, and I go home at 11, between 11.30, 12 on a Saturday afternoon. When I come home, and nothing. usually on the weekends, they would bring the children to my little apartment that I rent. They bring the children over here for hours at a time and leave them. I got to find something for them to eat. They'd bring a diaper bag with diapers and wipes. Wow. Wow. I support my... I, my mother depends on me. She's still, my family is in Barbados. And my mother depends on whatever I make here. So uh, everyone has been like, why, why you didn't leave? Why you stay for all of that? Because they're depending you, on I you. I just can't pick. I just can't pick up and leave. Because I have responsibilities. And also, when somebody's telling you every day they're going to call the immigration. Yes, you, I know. I understand. When you, don't, when, people don't, when you don't live like that and have to worry about that, you don't know what that is like until you have to live it yourself. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to suggest uh, to you except for, you know, keep the people close to you, close to you for emotional support. I want support. you to go on the Long Island Press website and read about what happened to me on oh. this August 17th, mm. their story, and I want you to read it and just put, keep, you know, just put it out there and let people know, you know, don't let this woman get away with this. There's got to be something that can be done for me up here. Is her name in the in the, in yes. the paper? Um, yes, her, her mugshot is on the front of the mm. Long Island Damn. Press um, paper <laughs> from their August 17th issue. Well, look, I thank you for calling, and, I, and I wish Wendy. you I well. You, and I've been listening to you. You're awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And respect to all the child care providers. Thank uh, you. Those of you who are good people, um, and I know that there are plenty of you. I mean, I know there's a lot of you that steal and whatnot, and, you know, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the good people, you know, who do everything with loving hands and thoughtfulness in their heart. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Wendy, man. My boyfriend and I have been dating for like about four months now, and first time we had sex, he could not get it off at all. Maybe it's drinking. Is he a drug user? Does he take any depressants or anything? No, nothing. Maybe it's for you too. Don't come around here with that Wendy Williams. Get your facts straight or shut Experience. Wendy Experience. Wendy Williams. Show on her. Wendy Williams. Experience. All righty, everybody. Jazzy Faye and CeeLo will be our guests for the Hour of Truth. They're running a little late, so they probably won't make it for this break, but they'll definitely be here for the second break. So the Vibe Music Awards uh, come on when? Tomorrow night, right? Yes. Can't wait to see. Mariah Carey walked away. They actually taped it on Saturday night. She got four trophies, including Album of the Year for Emancipation of Mimi. Good for you, Mimi. I wonder what she wore. Little or nothing. I wonder how she danced on stage with her hands. <laughs> uh, but did she hit all of her notes? I'm sure. And what, is, what does she do, Art, when she goes in for the big note? What does she do, physically speaking? She she bends her knees and she grabs her ear with her pointer finger. She, oh, she, she can hear herself. Yes, yeah. She she puts that finger up and. <laughs> oh boy. Well, 
Well, um, I also understand that Mary J. Blige gave a fabulous speech. You know, she got the Lifetime Achievement Award, and they say that was the that her speech was the emotional climax of the evening. And one of the things she said during her speech, here's her quote: "I started so young doing this, and I'm still young. I'm just so happy that I can be in a state of mind where I can receive it." I totally understand what she's talking about. Co-host for the evening, Tracy Ellis Ross and Anthony Anderson. I don't exactly know how that flows for hosting an event like that. I knee-jerk reaction is like, why? Why? <laughs> but they cracked about the violence last year, and people say that they were okay hosts. We'll be the judges tomorrow night. Um, Kanye West didn't show up, and neither did R. Kelly, but, but they won. Kanye won for Best Rapper. And R. Kelly won for best or for realist video, R E E L E S T for the Trapped in the Closet series. T I won um, Street Anthem for a second year in a row. Ah, Ludacris and Sierra won Coolest Collabo for Oh, mm-hmm. and Keisha Cole and Young Jeezy. My picks for next in my head because I love both of them, and they won. They they tied for the next award. Mm hmm. Did I just say something about Tracy Ellis Ross? Okay, well then let's keep that going. Congratulations to Tracy and the entire cast of Girlfriends. They have gotten a salary double. Um, The paperwork will be completed. The deal will be done during the summer. But, um, excuse me, they were were done during this past summer. So now um, everybody from Tracy Ellis to Golden Brooks, Persia White, uh, Jill Marie Jones, and Reggie Hayes, they all were making... Um, $75,000 per episode. Now they're making $150,000 per episode. So I think that's fabulous. And um, this is the sixth year of Girlfriends, so it's about time. Um, in addition to the raise, raises that they all got, uh, UPN gave each of the cast members a high-def plasma TV worth $20,000. Kelsey Grammer. You know? Yeah. Good for them. Something tells me that that raise is long overdue, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, like long overdue. Like, I'm happy for them, but don't big up Kelsey Grammer. Because if Kelsey Grammer, if, if they were white, I wonder if they would have gotten their raises faster. If this was a show that appealed to white people. A shout out to all the white people listening. I'm just saying. Six years on the show, uh, six years that this show has been on, and they're just getting to make $150,000 an episode. Don't cheer. That's money overdue. Don't cheer for Kelsey Grammer and his wife, who couldn't answer our uh, poll question with a yes. She'd have to answer with a no. Do you make a bowel movement at least once a day? (laughs) Well, she has irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. What made you decide to ask that question for the people poll question, please? Because you'd like to know your listeners, and it's, 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 a, it's something that happens every day to us. Some people don't do it every day. Some people wait weeks. Mm. I'd like to know your listeners. Well, Elisa Payne, our booker. Yeah. She came in and she said she doesn't have a bowel movement a day. Yeah, that's, that's unhealthy. I'm th- I was going to say, I think that that's unhealthy. Isn't that unhealthy? Yes, yes. All that impacted waste? Yeah, that's all it is. Imagine what her breath smells like. Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a yes or no. Do you make a bowel movement at least once a day? Our people poll question from Friday is, are you sleeping with three or more people at this present time? Well, 7% of you said yes. And 93% of you said no. Now, let's go on. Um... Okay, wait a minute. I don't need to talk to Junebug on line six. Junebug, I didn't return uh, call you, so how are you returning my phone call? <laughs> <laughs> Carla, I, I don't even have to pick up the phone with you, Carla. I can give you the Dons and Divas website. Are you ready? Um, first of all, you can go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com because on thewendywilliamsexperience.com, um, you're not going to see the, the address of the place. You're just going to see that it's the black party. No tickets to Ticketmaster. Majority of tickets are going to be won on the radio. Um, it's the ultimate grown and sexy affair. It's in New York City. It's going to be at a very well appointed place. You're going to see our list of sponsors that we have so far. Um, and that's about it. There will be VIP seating um, available. This is not a concert, by the way. This is a party. But Trey Sons is performing and goodness only knows who else will jump on the stage and perform five hours of open bar. You know, Five hours of open bar to everybody, everybody in the party. This, that's not just for a VIP thing. That's everybody in the whole party. 
Don's and the word and A N D E. D O N S A N D E, then Divas. D I V A S. 2005 at yahoo.com. That's the, e- that's the email. Carla, if you want to email a question, then you go there. Okay, Don's and Divas 2005 at yahoo.com. Did you Thank say you. A-N-D-E? A-N-D. Would I say, say E on the end? A-N-D-E. Oh, all right. A-N-D. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Sue is calling about Nicole the transvestite. What happened to her? I don't want to talk about that. So, And Tracy is having a problem with her boyfriend and her mother. Hmm. I've seen the pictures coming around on the web regarding Halle Berry and her six toe. People have been saying that for ages. But there's some women that have such a big knuckle and, and a big amount of, like, thick skin on the outside of their foot that it literally looks like an extra pinky toe. I don't believe that Halle Berry has a six toe. I believe that the six toe that people are saying is a toe is actually, you know, that extra skin. You know what I'm talking about, Art? Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about. I know I know. Exactly. Well, I went to the expert. Thank you. And shout out to Angelina Paradise. Dear Wendy, girl, did you happen to see Charlie Wilson, a.k.a. Charlene, sashaying on the Apollo on Saturday night? How you doing? Great voice, but Miss Thang is too much. It's from Faith in BK. No. I did not. I didn't see the Apollo on Saturday night. Hello, Wendy. Hi. I'm curious to know who that Raven person is that you mention often. He sounds sexy. How can I get at him? Signed, curious as hell. Raven, is this you writing a letter about yourself? Look look at the handwriting art. It looks like it's right. Is this Raven trying to drum up his own business? Raven. Oh, by the way, I got a telephone call behind the scenes telling me don't don't get involved with the um, the the nanny from Barbados um, mess because more to the story is about to unfold. But like we were saying, like behind the scenes, how much more to the story unfolds than an employer beating an employee and throwing them down the steps where they land on their head. I mean, it's still not right. By the way, shout out to you, nanny. Um, I have a telephone number in the 718 to give to you if you are interested in some some legal help. Did you see the, our little um, Asian gay friend from Half yeah, and Half yes. on Desperate Housewives? I, I thought about you. Loved him. Yeah, Loved yes, him. Cool. Yes. Very cool. What about you? And still in character. Yes. Gay. Yeah. Not as flamboyant, but he's still good. He's still good. Gay and Asian. There you go. That's what I love. How you doing? <laughs> How you feel? Oh. $1.99. Mike Tyson is going to be going back to Brazil. The judge ordered it on Friday. He's got to return to the country next week, excuse me, next March to stand trial for allegedly assaulting that cameraman. Now, you remember I mentioned that story last week? Well, now Mike's got to stand trial for it. He was accused of... Mike is accused of breaking the camera and hitting the cameraman over the head with the camera oh. equipment <laughs> at, a, at a Brazilian nightclub. Mike admits to breaking the camera and destroying the tape because um, he didn't want to be filmed, but he denies assaulting the cameraman. Now, listen to this, because if he's found guilty, he's going to be fined and sentenced to community service in Brazil. Could it be that bad? In Brazil, community service? Sounds like a plan. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, oh my. (laughs) Oh, and Martha Stewart's Apprentice has been canceled, officially. The last episode will be on TV December 21st. It's going to be a two-hour season finale. 13 episodes. And see, they shouldn't have taped 13 episodes. They should have taped either 12 or 14. There you go. See? And now it's been canceled. Good. So, Snoop Dogg's hot dogs are going to be called. It's in the newspaper today. Foot long Snoop Dogs. Oh my God. Ugh, full of nitrates, dog ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I totally, totally am supporting Snoop, you know, bouncing to from venture to venture. But I'm just so nervous of how these dogs are going to be packaged 
what they're going to put in them. Because they're going to know that it's the majority folk that are buying them just for like a novelty thing. You know what I mean? So that's a quick way to, you know, off a few of us, you know, put some genocide in them. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, are white people going to be buying foot long Snoop Doggy Dogs? No. Black people will buy them. Yeah. And not all black people. That's no. not what I'm saying. No. But I'm saying like it's a novelty, you know, gag or whatever. No. You know, like Thanksgiving, you know, here's the pigs in the blanket made with foot long Snoop Doggy Dogs or whatever. <laughs> that depends a- on the price. Well, they're not going to be expensive, I'm sure. Mm. I mean, if they get too expensive, hell, you can just bounce over to the Chick House Griddle Franks. They, ooh. Ooh. Which I, mm. Wendy, my boyfriend said he was going through something and he said that he would be all right. Wendy, since he made that statement, I've asked him, what are you going through? And he continues to say he's going to be okay. Wendy, every time I think about his secret, my chest aches and my stomach gets nervous. Wendy, I'm dying to find out what the big secret is. Wendy, I need advice on how to approach this situation and get him to talk to me. Sign nervous. Nervous? How long has he been your boyfriend? Because if you're going to say something like three months, then... Maybe this is not business that you need to be a part of. Um, How do you get him to talk to you? Well, I find three shots of the truth serum and a long pull of get right. We'll make him. I mean, I mean, let's talk. Let's talk. talk. Three shots of Hennessy and some get right. And that'll, you know, that'll loosen, that'll loosen him up. I don't, I don't know how you loosen them up to talk. I don't have enough information about you all's relationship. Your boyfriend, do you have kids together? I mean, like, it is, is it a deeper relationship than, he's my boyfriend. You know, do you have children together? Have you been together for years? Because depending on how long you've been together, you are owed an explanation regarding anything he says. Oh, it's a secret. He shouldn't have told you to begin with. Now he's told you, and I understand all your nervous nelliness. I don't know enough about your relationship. Particularly how long you all have been together. You know what I mean? Keep it where you got it, everybody. CeeLo. And Jazzy Faye. will be in for our next break. Thank you. It's Wendy, man. So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. Don't it, it, ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams wow. Experience. We're Vaughn Harper's coming up at 7 o'clock with the quiet storm. Right now, it's the Wendy Williams experience. And this hour of the show is brought to you by Visa. Hmm, let me talk with you about L.A. Weight Loss, 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. L.A. Weight Loss helped me lose 17 pounds almost two years ago. In the spring, it'll be two years. I've kept it off for almost a year. Almost two years. Wait, 18 months. Oh, my gosh. Damn sure is Wow, time has flown. I mean, you know, I've got my moments. You know, I'll get on the scale. I've gained, you know, a pound or two or whatever, but I quickly get right back to, you know, what I was doing. And basically, it's eating right, eating sensibly, not denying myself or depriving myself of any of the foods that I love. Sometimes I tend to overindulge, though, and, you know, and I'll wear that, and I'll lie on that sword, but I get right back up and keep it moving. LA Weight Loss is a fantastic weight loss program. I had a one-on-one weight loss counselor the whole time that I was on the weight loss program, which it took me just under 10 weeks to lose the weight, 17 pounds. Um, You'll have a one-on-one weight loss counselor, too. Somebody that you can call, somebody that you can confide in, whether it be drama going on in your life as it relates to your food, drama going on with your with your girlfriend or boyfriend as it relates to your food. It all comes back to the food. So LA Weight Loss provides you with a one on one weight loss counselor. And I think I'm about to tell you, you could sign up. OK. Yes, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hollywood. <clears throat> and they're still running their special this week. If you sign up for L.A. Weight Loss or if you're already on L.A. Weight Loss, it's only going to cost you $5 this week. Only $5 this week. Five bucks. Five bucks. That's less than that pack of cigarettes that you that you smoke. That's less money than it costs to get from New Jersey to New York through the Lincoln Tunnel. Here, tell they're planning on raising that to $7. Well, that's a whole other topic. 
Five bucks doesn't get you much these days, but it does get you a free week on a uh, five dollar week on LA Weight Loss. And can I just tell you, LA Weight Loss prices aren't bad to begin with. As a matter of fact, they're quite affordable. Find out what millions of people already know. We have a new year coming up, and I know that you know you're thinking in terms of your life and how you want to do things differently. Maybe weight loss is one of those things you'd like to do differently. Take this number call when you're ready. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's LA Weight Loss. WBLS is the proud sponsor of the GED Connection, something that I happened to see when I woke up on Sunday morning. Now, I know this says it comes on every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 a.m. and repeats at 12.30 p.m., but I saw it on Sunday morning, repeating, and it wasn't on Channel 13. It was on Channel like eight or something like that anyway the GED connection is great because um, you can get extra help academically speaking the help that you need it's the GED connection on channel 13 airing every Tuesday and Thursday 6 a.m. and it repeats again at 1230 p.m. you can log on for, onto our website to find out more information about this or our Christmas party with a purpose or anything that you need the party with a purpose by the way is December 17th at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. So log into our website and find out all the information at WBLS.com. And this damn raven, you know what? Here he is. It was his handwriting. Look at the facts. Coming from the same facts machine, he says, Wendy, I am my own biggest fan. I'll date myself. Hell yeah. And I wouldn't mind having a Snoop Dogg in my mouth. Oh. And he says, all right. Raven, you need a hug. You need a hug. <laughs> Here's the part, Raven, that I knew it was your handwriting. First of all, you write your name this, the same way when you're trying to be your own lover. As Look look how he wrote his name here. And look how he writes his name when he writes his name. There you go, yep. You know, Raven, when you write a cryptic note, you're supposed to use the opposite hand of whatever hand you... Oh, here's another one. Wendy, I swear I've been trying to win that ten that one thousand dollars. So far I've been calling number three and the next time I call those number six today, it might be my lucky day. All Roy. It's Raven again. He's so Raven. All right. Um let's go to the telephone. Do we have time to talk to our friends? Yeah. Okay. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the radio. How are you? It's nice to have you here. Oh great. By the way, shout out to everybody at Hood. Topmodels.com. That's where the future video vixens and models and spokeswomen go to get their okay. career jump started. So, hood, top model, topmodels.com. So, what are you calling about? Actually, I'm calling when you to see if I can get any tickets for the Christmas party. Oh, we're not giving them away now. Have we been giving those tickets away? Are we? Is this the season right now where we're giving those tickets away? That probably won't start until like two weeks before the party. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, it's December 17th. We're not even at November 17th yet. I know, but I want to get my outfit ready and things like that. Oh, I understand. Well, why don't you call Ticketmaster? Oh, it's $100. I'm in college, Wendy. Oh, oh, you sound so sophisticated. I am that too, but, you know, I work two jobs. I'm in college. I have a daughter. Well, look at you. $100, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Well, you can always listen for your chance to win. It's our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. I will continue to listen. And, yeah, I know we'll be giving out tickets. It's just not now. Probably two weeks before the party, we'll start giving them away. Okay. And also, about the Steve Madden thing mm -hmm. on Thursday, mm -hmm. um, are they giving away free things? or What exactly are they doing? Well, um, Steve is going to be there uh, probably introducing, I believe he's introducing, you know, more shoes. It's actually, um, it's on four, the juniors department on four. Okay. And so, you know, in his store, he also sells clothing. Right. So maybe they're doing a whole Steve Madden section. You know, I'm not exactly sure. I just know Steve is going to be there. I've been asked to be there. And um, there will be some free goodies. What those goodies are, you don't know. I'm not sure. What does Junior's for me? What does that mean? The Junior's department is on the fourth floor of Macy's. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And Houseware is what? Oh, my I'm gosh. Um, Houseware? No, Harold Square. Oh, Harold Square. Um, it's on 34th Street at uh, like Broadway. Seven, Broadway. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? When you talk on the radio, you, I mean, I i love listening to you just uh -huh. because I can relate to some of the things that you say mm -hmm. and some of the advice that you give makes me crack up. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I love listening to you. Thank you. I think, you know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So funny. Thank you so much for listening. 
so no problem. And then you have a child. I have a child who's in the same age bracket. And oh. So, you know. Yeah, we're, we're navigating our way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for calling. All right, Wendy. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, I, I have to go? By Anthony, right? Okay. All right, everybody. We're going conti- we're gonna to continue with this break. Um, Jazzy Faye and CeeLo coming up next on the Wendy Williams Experience. Keep it here. There was a house in my neighborhood unlike the others. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You going to blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Wendy Williams experience. Let's open the door. Bring in Jazzy Faye. Yeah. Oh. Well, how, how do you do? What's up, Mama? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we've ever right. met before. What's going on? CeeLo's here, too. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't realize everything was getting done at one time. Oh. Mm. Nice to see you also. Well, Art, um, can somebody use your microphone? No. I don't like that. Oh, okay. Damn. No, exactly. Use that microphone right there. All right, Jazzy, you have a seat. Hello, how are you? I'm all right. There's a lot of meat in the room. <laughs> you guys, you guys are, uh, are are nice sized men, and me too, also. So look, it's nice to have you here, Jazzy. I think this is our first time meeting. CeeLo's been here before. You got to lean up to the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you are now tuned in to the very best. You, Fizzle. you are um, from exquisite lineage. Denise yeah. Williams, the legendary ah, singer. Stop, right there. Is that your mother? That is not my mama. Oh. Silly of y'all to think that she Where did that come ever from? be your mom to me. Where did that come from? Uh, it's, it, you know, what happened was, see, it started from a rumor. It, it started like uh, Jazzy has famous, you know, he's, he's from a, you know, a, a musical family. Yes. You know, and then my mom's name is Denise Williams. Okay. But your father is um, James Alexander the Barcase. From the Barcase. Yes, leader of the Barcase. Yes. So you got a chance to see a lot of um well, are you are you old enough that you remember your father going out on the road and stuff Wait, like that? I was there with him. I was there. Oh, wonderful. I was there in Madison Square Garden when the you know, when the P Funk came. Wow. I was there. Nice. So now you have Sierra, yes, and um that's money right there. Oh that's, boy. That's good money. As a matter of fact, I yeah. Sierra's on the cover. If you look at this, of the new Jolie magazine. And CeeLo, look, you look also. I swore that this was... Wait, hold on. I swore that this was who? Tony Braxton. I swore that that was Tony Braxton. I didn't know that this was our girl. Jazzy Faye, though. It's a little different. I haven't seen that one. You want to know something? Bow Wow absolutely can't handle that woman right here. Please tell me that's a stunt relationship. Oh, man. I, you know, they, they, just, <laughs> they love each other. They do? They do. They do. It's, the way cra- you- it's crazy. I mean, you have to see it to believe it, though. Wow. It's like, you know. It's real. Yeah. I mean, he was actually there when we were recording our first four songs when me and Sierra, like, first started working together. And he was like, uh, he, actually, he was without Jermaine at the time. Right. You know, so I was about to do the Let's Get Down uh, first single of his last album. Yes. So... Uh, he was over there, you know, getting getting fizzle fizzled. You yes. know what I'm saying? And uh, he was out in the, in the lobby at Dallas Austin Studio. Yes. And I had Sierra in the control room, so he hadn't seen her yet. He was coming to see me. Yes. So she walks out, and he just goes, "Oh my God!" He runs up to me like, "Jazzy, who's that? Who's that? Who's that?" Yeah. Like, this is before, you know. I mean, can I ask you something? Did it ever really affect her? They the classed at first, so it was kind of like authentic how it happened. Well, that, that's a lot of times how some of the great relationships are built. Yeah. Did it did it um, did it offend her um, in in her most deep private private times um, that people were saying that she's a man, which I thought was totally ludicrous. I'm sure it did. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, somebody said that that you know you were man. How would you feel? They do it all the time. I love I mean, it. I'm, but I mean, I embrace I mean, I mean, it. How would I feel if I was you're, eighteen you're special, years old? You're special, though. You're special. You're yeah, one, you wanted the special one. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? How so. would I feel if I was eighteen and they did it? Ho- yeah. Horrible. Or yeah. however old she is, horrible. I mean, you know, I mean, you can still be special at eighteen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it just takes a, it just takes a real strong woman to just move on and yeah, and, and, and really, you know, kind of just shine it off. I mean, but she's she's every bit of a woman. Yes. You know, yes, she is. Yes, that's such C- a lady as well. CeeLo, how is the goodie mob? <laughs> Why that got to be the first damn question you I'm ask? So, okay, uh, that'll be my second question. Okay. First question is, how is your daughter? She's fine. 
Now, <laughs> did you originally, did you want her to be part of that MTV show? Or is that something that she was like, please, daddy, please, daddy? Well, I didn't mind. It actually was um, put together by a mutual friend of um, of my wife's and, and I. Uh, uh-huh. um, her name is Ashley. She's a, a caterer. She caters to the stars. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, the, the idea came, you know, through her. And uh, they did a... Um, uh, audition tape for her and they loved her they loved her so much in fact that they made the exception for her to do the Sweet 15 Sweet 15 yeah so yeah. I didn't mind like, I, now, I, cool. I forgot how it ended up did she get a Mercedes no what, what, did she get a car no she just got what? a car and she's got, she got a Tiara oh that's right because she's only 15 she yeah. can't have a car right so I guess she's been walking around this school year like stuff doesn't stink how are her grades they're better they're better better <laughs> yeah I mean, she, look, we were all 15 at one point. I know I would have gotten ha- carried away <laughs> with all that exposure. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's a part of her star quality. She has uh, handled it, handled it, has, she handles it well. And she is her own little celebrity at this point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how close are you fellas that you're here together? Are you um, are you uh, best friends, you and, and Jazzy Faye, CeeLo? This is my soul brother. And uh, we are here you know, together. That is very nice. Letting all the world know that we are doing an album. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah, the happy hour. The album is called The Happy Hour. 60 Minutes of Well-Dressed Drama. Mm-hmm. Will be coming your way February. Well, now, who's going to be performing on it other than, of course, CeeLo? All right. Oh, well, it's actually, it's me and uh, CeeLo, the whole album, Jazzy Fan, CeeLo Green. Um, we're a group. Yeah, we're a group. We're an act at this point. What's yes. your group called? Jazzy Faye and CeeLo Green. Why would we okay. change it, Dave? Everybody knows those names. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Good time, guys. Yeah, good time, guys. GTG, baby. Are you so, are you married, uh, Jazzy Faye? No. Are you in love? Are I'm, you, I'm in love with music. Are you sleeping with more than three women right now? Oh, stop. Listen, that was our people poll question. Stop it, I said. 93% say. of the audience is sleeping with just with less than, but 7% of the audience is sleeping with three or more. Wow. Yeah, you go figure. That's, that's, what, it, that's what they say. Well, you know. So, <laughs> so, so now, um, CeeLo, what is up with the Goody Mob? No, uh, we have been talking about and working on a reunion album, you know, so actually, you know, um, sometime in the near future, you know, uh, first priority is the Jazzy Fan CeeLo Green album, and I have another solo album coming out next year, and another album with uh, Danger Mouse as well, so I got a lot of work. Y'all will be hearing a lot from me in the next couple of years, and then we'll, we'll you know, try to really, really formal formalize the Goody Mob reunion, mm-hmm. but we're working on it, though, all throughout the, the process. Good. Yeah. Good. Speaking of marriage, is CeeLo ain't married? Well, no, see, that's right, CeeLo. Wait, now your daughter we know. Now is that your baby's mom, yeah. or is that your wife? That's not your. That's not your that's wife. My, my ex-wife's daughter. Oh, do you She's also do you also sleep together? No, <laughs> I'm just asking. No. Are you in love with somebody else? I still love her, actually. Would you want to get back together if you could work it out? Oh, uh, one of these days, uh, yeah. That is a very, very sweet, very honest thing to say. Mm-hmm. How long were you married before you got divorced? Four years. Four and a half years. And then how long have you been divorced? Two years. And you've dated around because you've had the freedom and mm-hmm. you find that there's no place like home. It's just that there, I guess there are a few mm-hmm. emotional things to work out. Exactly. Does she know this? She knows it. Does she Does she date and, and have fun? and Does uh, she want to be back with you? That's not her thing. Um, she wants to be, you know, back with me, of course. And like, you know, but... Well, why'd you all get this divorced to begin with? Can I say irreconcilable difference? Yeah. It wasn't you cheating, was it? No, it wasn't. What, other women have never really been a problem of mine. Like, when I was happily married, I was. Yeah. You know? Well, I wish you well on getting back together. You don't hear people say that that much. That is really, that's, that's sweet, if oh, you yeah, don't mind that, me saying. <clears throat> that's my girl. Yeah. Oh. For sure. Jazzy Faye, you need to do something with your money, like share it with somebody. Oh, I share. You need to. <laughs> you. Somebody is sharing with you, Wendy. That is a gorgeous ring. Thank Jesus. you. God Almighty. Look, Jazzy Faye, you know you don't want to get married one day. Do you have children? I have a child. How old? Uh, eight years old. I'm mm-hmm. a single parent as well. Where's yeah. the mother? She's out somewhere. <laughs> it happens like that yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But, but did you, you got me. Did you have to snatch the child from underneath yeah, her going through the court? Literally, yeah. Yep. And the mom is out I there. I took him right out of school. That doesn't say very much for a woman who turns her back on their child. I mean, it doesn't say much I mean, for men it, either. I mean, but it wasn't that she turned her back on her, her child. She turned her back on herself. Drugs. You know is that drugs? Uh, well, we ain't going to get all into that. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I know. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Oh. 
I live a private life. All right. Well, well somewhat. I'll start. <laughs> I'll start digging now that I've met you, yeah. fellas. I want to thank you for good, coming man. in. Let's go. I want to thank you for coming in. I, I really, this is like a getting to know Celo. I already know you, yes. but but we always have a nice conversation. We sure do. And Jazzy Fay, I'm just knowing you now, but I mm -hmm. love all the work that you've done in the past. I mean, Thanks, darling. This is a Jazzy Fizzle, Fizzle. ladies and gentlemen. Yes. This is a Jazzy Fizzle production. Love you with Wendy Wizzle. Love Wendy you, Wendy Wenzel. You're gonna give me some nice drops, you guys. Oh, for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, darling. Take care. Bye, Bye sweetie. Bye, darling. Wendy, man. I met up with this guy. We were together we were at his house, and why do you think his thing wouldn't work? Do you think maybe he's... How you doing? The 0.5 WBLS, New York. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. This is Mariah Carey. Hey, yo, what up? This is your boy, Ron Artest. Hey, this is Persia White. What's up? This is Morris Chestnut. This is your fabulous girl, Takara. What up? This is your boy, Omarion. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Vivica Fox. And you can put that where? Back there. The Wendy Williams Experience. Hey, this is Persia White. What's up? This is Rolanda Watts. This is Rachel True, Mona from Half and Half, and you are listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. 305, this Britt and Ricky. What up, this is Omarion. What's up, this your boy Trey Songz. You listen to the queen of all media, Wendy Williams herself. Holding down the NYC. Listen, Wendy. Yes? I think you have to put on that recording of your saying that word. I think it's necessary. Fire! Daddy! <laughs> Oh, we love that, Wendy. I'm on fire. It's Wendy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. A shout out to Bobby Burnett listening in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Thank you so much for the facts, Bobby. So, a man called earlier, and I thought pretty much everybody um, heard this story about the, the um, wrestler, the WWE wrestler found dead yesterday in his hotel room. Well, to repeat the story, his name is Edward, Eduardo Guerrero. He's 38 years old, and he apparently didn't respond to a wake-up call. And so the hotel security went to his room, forced their way in, and they found him dead. There were no apparent signs of foul play, the police say. Um, and he'd been open about drugs and alcohol in the past, but from all accounts... People are saying that he'd been sober for four years. I don't know anything more about it. Vince McMahon says it's a huge loss. A wonderful, fun-loving human being. Um, he'd done a few things on TV, including cheating death, stealing life, the Eddie Guerrero story. Um, that aired on UPN last year. And, well, you know, 38. For some reason, when athletes pass and they're young, I don't know whether it's just me, but there's something about it that I say, okay, different lane. That's that that's a totally different lane. Yeah. That's that's steroids or or you know whatever whatever it is. That's that's different from me. Because he you know he's a peer group member, you know, 38. But I don't I I feel like different lane. Different lane, overactive body. I lay around like a, you know, like a fish. You know. Yeah, supplements. The world of supplements. Yeah, yeah. So when an athlete passes, I just, you know, even when in God rest the dead, Flo Jo, you know, I was like, oh, you know, that's the running thing. You know, that's the athlete. I don't know what she was up to. Maybe nothing. But just in my mind, I always feel like you know, athletes are up to something. But even even if it's not an illegal substance, it sometimes. The stimulants that we use. Yeah. So, something. Get Richard Die trying open this weekend. And um, I was saying earlier, I, I, um, I saw it. And I thought it was good. I, you know, I didn't go in with high expectations. I never go into any movies with high expectations. You know, I go in to be entertained, take my mind off my own troubles for, you know, a moment. And, um, and, and you know... Watch the story unfold. It did the trick. It did the trick. I didn't like the way it ended, though. But it did the trick. If you ask me, well, how would I end it? I don't know. I mean, I guess it was okay then. It did the trick. Tell you one thing, that movie came out just in time to make sure that Preem stays in jail and Murder, Inc. is going down. 
<laughs> I mean, Gotties, it's not looking good for you all. Chris, Irv? Just a movie. And you know, not for nothing. It's that guy, Preem. Excuse me, what was his name in the movie? Yeah, Richard uh, Dice Mm hmm. I forgot his name. Yeah. He effed his, he 50s character's mother yeah. and then killed her. If that's the way it went down, <sighs> under the jail. Yeah. Yeah. Majestic. Yeah. Ja Rule, you, you definitely, they, look, though, they had you looking like a straight punk in the movie. But I guess that was intentional. He was called Dangerous. Yeah, yeah, Dangerous. And majestic was Supreme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. What, the job Rule part? Yes, it was really crazy. Yeah. You were so delayed in your reaction. I know, because I'm just thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, they had him looking crazy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, Art, you're an old school music aficionado. I know that you're probably one of the few people that has Eddie Murphy's album, So Happy. Of course. Well, on that album, there's a song called Put Your Mouth On Me, and I didn't know that featured Johnny Gill. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. Case, case closed again, people. <laughs> Thank you, McNasty. McNasty from Orlando reminded us of that. Hmm. Wendy, my white husband and I will be at the Laugh Factory on Wednesday by invite. What time shall we arrive? We will be seating in the VIP section, question, question. I can't wait to see you. It's from Yvette. Yvette, you could sit wherever you want, yes. but I'll be damned if I sit next to anybody who's going to be talking to me through the entire show. <laughs> so I'll, I'll see you all on Monday. I just, you know, all that talk through the show. Wednesday. I mean, Wednesday. It's Yvette Murtha from Connecticut, everybody. Um, well, the doors open up event at 8 o'clock, and the comedy starts at 9 o'clock. So I usually get there between 8 and 8.30, so we can have our conversation before the comedy show. Okay, good. All right, so I'll see you and your white husband <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday night at the Laugh Factory. Um, 42nd Street at 8th Avenue. It's the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. So Radio Disney, which is so sappy. Like, I never listen to that with my kid in the car. I mean, even I gag. You know, at the at the kiddiosity of it all. I mean, just totally, like a total shield of kids from reality. Like all, this, just the kiddiosity of it all. I'm like embarrassed. My own. Oh my gosh! But anyway, so Radio Disney did a concert sponsored at the Mall of America. I think this was the Mall of, um, of America. Anyway, wherever it was, it was a, a concert. And the concert was starring B5, and it ended in a chaotic scene with injuries and everything. They had to close the mall down. Well, the crowd was estimated at 2,500 people, and they surged onto the stage as the second song started. B5 is up there singing. Some of the fans were trampled in the melee, and teenage girls fought each other to get rips of the boys' clothes and, you know, a, a lock of their hair and whatnot. It was called the Brooklyn Center Mall. Yes. But for some reason, I thought this happened out in Minnesota at the Mall of America. Anyway, the mall was shut down for over two hours and four people were taken to the hospital with injuries and five others were treated right there on the scene. The B5 Mall Tour is running nationwide right now. And it's called the Jingle Jam Tour. It's sponsored by Radio Disney, where you would think I think everything would be the sun will come out tomorrow and all, you know, safe and whatnot. Wow. B5. So I was reading in the newspaper, and I'm sure you guys saw it, or perhaps you didn't. Maybe you listened to this show on the particular day that I announced it. Um, I was telling you guys that L.A. Reid's son is going to be the subject of MTV's new Super Sweet 16. I told you that maybe two months ago. Well, it's come to fruition. You know, they tape these shows before they actually come on TV. L.A. Reid's son Aaron's Sweet 16 party, which doesn't sound right when you're talking about a boy, but okay, let's go with that. And you call it a coming out party? Doesn't sound, uh-uh. Hmm. What do you call it for a boy? Super 16. Super 16. Mm-mm. 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 Mm -mm. <laughs> and for the for um, MTV, it's called my Super Sweet Sixteen. So, anyway, um, he had his Sweet Sixteen party at the Forty Forty Club. 
here in Manhattan. And it was all taped. The MTV cameras were in there. Swiss Beats was the DJ. Jermaine Dupri was up in there. Kanye West, Tierra Marie performed. Jay-Z, Puffy were in the building. That's some kind of Sweet 16, right? Yes. Heavy star, star power. So far, Aaron Reed wins the Sweet 16 competition. Because you know after star power like that, whatever he's going to get, it's going to be, he'll probably get, you know, a CL65 with the AMG kit and, the, you know, the rims and whatnot. I mean, his, whatever he gets is not going to just be some Range Rover. And that's not even a plain car, but I'm just saying. I mean, you know, you listen to the guest list and where he had his party and stuff like that. The Reeds are about to put it on smash. I saw a couple episodes of um, the, Run D, the, the Reverend Run show this weekend. I don't like that they have the wife sneaking food and hiding food and, and all that other kind of stuff. There's something really pathetic about that. Really pathetic. And especially... Especially... And you know, like, when he stops her from eating and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, like, looking at the whole thing with the how you doing. I am sorry. I'm, I'm glazed over by that. Like, wow, you got the nerve to be, you know, on somebody about losing some damn weight. <laughs> as if that would make you any damn more interested. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Easy. Well. It's the reverend. One of many men who runs to religion. Yeah, oh yeah. When everything else is in question. Mm -hmm. Goose, you've never seen the show, so yes, you I don't have. even know. You have? Yes, I have. Have you seen the way the wife likes to eat? Yeah, I saw the episode. I saw the basketball game, too, between himself and uh, Russell. Russell. He whipped Russell really good. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. run, is, run is sitting on the secret of life. You know what I'm saying? It's just funny. To, you know, almost everything he says on that show, I'm looking at the TV, I'm like, shut the F up, oh. you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who are you? Hey, Why don't you be real honest? Sometimes Ooh. people change. Excuse me? What the? <laughs> exactly. Sometimes people change. Cover is more like yes. <laughs> Everybody can come back home like you, Goose. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hit the telephone, see what you all are talking about. Hey, it's Wendy. Welcome to the radio. Nice to have you here. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. Did I win, Wendy? Oh, damn. No, no. It's not time to win. I'm sorry. What time is it to win? Uh, 25 after. Okay, so put me back on hold and call me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no more, um, no more telephones. Because, um, yeah, I forgot it's that time of day again. Dear Wendy, my name is Diana, and I too suffer from Graves' disease as it relates to thyroid disease. I just wanted to let you know that you are so lucky that you're not suffering the way I am. I was diagnosed with thyroid disease in September of 2004 and by April of 2005 I had begun to go blind in my right eye. This was after I lost 20 pounds and the palpitations and the tremors were crazy. I'm only 5 feet tall and I weigh 120 pounds naturally. Within two weeks of seeing Dr. Roger, my ophthalmologist who specializes in orbital disease. I had a procedure called the bilateral optic nerve decompression to relieve the pressure on my optic nerve naturally which causes bulging. I just had a second surgery on Friday the 11th on the same eye and have a muscle cut so that the eye won't move, would move properly when it was healed. It left me with a lazy eye. Wendy, you are not crazy to be cautious about your health. I am only 29 years old and I never thought that a little thyroid problem could cause so much trouble nor stress. I am now back to 120 pounds thanks to medication, but my vision has been damaged tremendously as well as my everyday well-being that we all take for granted. I advise anyone with thyroid trouble to stay on it, please. I will keep you posted on my battle. Thanks for your time. Wishing you the best of health. Oh, that's Diana Coleman in Rawway. Oh, Diana. And I wish you well. Take care. See, Art? Yeah. Now you see what I was going through behind the scenes? Yes, yes. I thought that I might be a candidate for going blind. And it happens rapidly. Not that I had blurry vision or anything like that. 
I have a really, really crazy, eccentric thyroid doctor. You know, sometimes you don't know, you know, whether he's serious or not. He's crazy and eccentric. He's like the nutty professor, but he's good. And so... Oh! Um, for a male, it should be called the coming-of-age party. No. No, Adrian... No, Adrian, that's not modern. Thank you, though, Adrian. Keep it here. 16th birthday bashment. Wendy, man. Now, my question is about the kegel. Why is it every time I try to do them, I have an orgasm? Is that normal? Uh, I don't know, but it must be pleasurable. The Wendy Williams experience. No. 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. If you call me right now, you can get your share of $107,000. We just giving you a thousand, though, but that's still a lot of money. We call number 10 at 212 $1,000 right here from 107.5 WBLS. Hey, BLS, you're calling number one. Hey, BLS, you're calling number two. How you doing? You're calling number three. All right. You're calling number four. <laughs> You're calling number five, BLS. <laughs> You're calling number six. <laughs> BLS, you call it number seven. B- <laughs> BLS, you call it number eight. <laughs> Give me another one, Artie. Okay, right now. <laughs> Hello? BLS, you call it number nine. <laughs> Here we go. WBLS, you call it number 10. <laughs> Hello? Don't go it. Hello? WBLS, you call it number 10. Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Oh, my God. I won? You won. Oh, my God. I've been listening for so long. Well, we appreciate it, and it pays to listen. What is your name? Tiffany. Tiffany, and your last name? Oh, God. I'm on the radio? Yes, Tiff. I don't. I don't. I know somebody is listening. I don't want them to know I won because they're going to want some of the money. Well, get a backbone and say no, Tiffany. This is your moment in the spotlight, woman. Sure. Where are you calling from? Queens. All right. Well, congratulations, Queen from Queens. You pick up, picked up uh, one thousand dollars in our one hundred thousand dollar cash guarantee. Oh my God! It's a pace to listen. I'm in shock right now. <laughs> well, let us uh, take all your information behind the scenes. Thank but- you so much. I love your show. Oh, thank you so much, Tiffany. And let us know the only radio station in town giving away the one hundred and seven thousand dollars. WBLS. Hold on, Tiff. Yeah, there's Tiffany there. Everybody, your next chance to win is. Again, tomorrow morning with your man and mine, Steve Harvey, 715. The winning begins again. Artie, do you know what you're going to be wearing for the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose? Um, something custom made. Oh. You've gotten really, really windy. A bit snobby, Art. You would never go to Target. I would. I know. I would go, too. Here, I'm sorry. Not anymore. You've already gotten measured? Oh, that's right. You said you were over at Roots, the men's store? No, no, Brooks Brothers. Oh, Brooks Brothers. Uh-huh. And they laser, you stood naked, and they they laser fit the you. Measurements, yeah. And you turn around and whatnot. And, and you stand still, and the lasers go all over throughout your body. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I love that. Is there a little gay man standing there watching it go down? I think Raymond Street. Oh, that's your, oh, that's your tailor. Yeah, Raymond, yeah. Raymond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not Ray. Raymond. Raymond. Yes. <laughs> Did they give you champagne while you were getting all this done? They offered me something to drink. Yes, yes exactly. They, 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 I was going to say. They, they, good, they, good, they, good. They, they, they you declined? Yeah, I didn't want any water or champagne or no soda or like that, no. So I, had to, I had to have him come here. Well, yeah. did he ask you what you did? I gave him a business card. Oh. Yes. What does that say? And he gave me his cell number. Because oh. he needs to come here to fit me. Oh. Like the fabulous Vinnie Brown gets fitted from the custom shop. Oh, oh. Yes, yes. I'm getting three suits and like uh, 14 shirts. 14 shirts and three suits. Initials and everything when we tell Initials, me. everything? Everything. Well, that must be setting you back a quick grip. It's going to be nice. It's going to be, I mean, yeah, they'll last forever, though. It's good to be Artie. It's good to be the producer of the Wendy Williams experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, does Raymond know you as Arthur? Yes, he does. Arthur J. Evans. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's my acting name. 
And tomorrow I'm so excited about going to the Laugh Factory for auditions for the Gong Show. Yeah. Six to eight. Now, you want to make sure that everybody is, um, you know, everybody, the Laugh Factory already does the Wendy Williams comedy experience. You know, that happens every Wednesday night. But tomorrow night, which is Tuesday the 15th, the Laugh Factory is the place to be to audition for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show. Remember I was telling you about it, but we just couldn't ascertain the times and the date. Is this information on our website? Yes, it is, actually. Okay, yes. great. Mm-hmm. Listen. We're not going to lie to you. We're looking for freaks, <laughs> singers, freaks, rappers, freaks, oh. dancers, freaks. You remember the gong show when Chuck Barris hosted it back in the day. When we get the gong show together, I play Chuck Barris. Yes. And Art's going to be one of the three people over there sitting at the gong. Mm. You're going to be the, the main one, as a matter of fact. You'll probably be like the Nipsey Russell. Or J.P. Morgan. Or J.P. Morgan. And then we'll have two others as well. That'll rotate. Right. That'll rotate. Maybe it'll be Goose there sometimes, whatever. But we're looking for your talent. Oh, there'll be prizes and surprises, too. This will be a whole... This is totally separate from the Wendy Williams comedy experience. This is the Wendy Williams gong show experience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the auditions are tomorrow at the Laugh Factory, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. You need to be on there knocking on your head as a guest. That's between 6 and 8 p.m. <laughs> Between 6 and 8 p.m. tomorrow. Between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. tomorrow. So I guess you won't be there for the first hour. No. I, I, yeah, no, no, I won't be the first hour, no. Yeah, but you shoot down there the second hour. Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So singers, freaks, rappers, freaks, dancers, oh. freaks, 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 freaks. I love contortionists. I love to see a man who can fit 121 grapes in his mouth. You know what I mean? Without crushing any That's of them. right, without crushing any of them. If you can line up M&M's up your nostril oh. and then oh. suck them in and bring them down and spit them into some vanilla oh. ice cream, I want to see that. Oh, please. I want to see you take a drag off something and blow the smoke out of your eyeball, all that. What? Singers, freaks, dancers, freaks, rappers, freaks. Anything but a freak to me is boring. Yeah. Spitting as I'm talking about it. But you know what I mean? Yep. I mean, this is the gong show. The new improved gong show. That's right. The Wendy Williams experience gong show experience. (laughs) Such auditions are tomorrow at the Laugh Factory in Times Square, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. Uh, Between 6 and 8 p.m. This is going to be great. This is going to be really, really great. Let me talk to you about two things, and then we have to move on. Um, I want to talk with you about Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Fabulous, fabulous place. Fabulous people. Fabulous, great location. Secaucus, New Jersey, they're located. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. They've got wonderful furniture from classic, traditional to classic and traditional to contemporary. You understand? Do you like that mirrored furniture? They've got that. Do you like the classic wood furniture like like your grandma had? They've got that, too. Do you like something a little bit more artsy? What about a splashy red leather sofa? You know what I mean? What about a really nice, dark, mahogany sleigh bed? What about some splat? I mean, just, you know, what about the Asian effect? What what do you want? They've got it. And I'm not telling you this because I've never been there. I'm telling you this because I know this place. I've gotten furniture there for home and now for my BLS office. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, wonderful place. Stephanie Cohen and her husband, Ben, own it. The website to see what's going on there, stephaniecohen.com. They're really excited because they have a new financing offer. They're offering you 12 months, no payment, no interest. Can you believe that? They've got the Martha Stewart Signature Gallery. Now, I don't know if you know Martha, but I know Martha enough to understand. She doesn't just put her stuff in any place. This is not the stuff that you find at Kmart. No, this is next level, Martha. Next level, ne- ne- Signature Gallery is something different. High end, more sophisticated. Wholesale prices. Hello? Stephanie's launched her new furniture line called Stephanie Cohen Furniture. And they have an incredible selection of rugs priced to roll out and go. You see something there that doesn't quite work with you? Maybe you need something tweaked? Talk to Tom. Tom is the rug expert. Tom knows what he's doing. 
I wouldn't send you just any place, but now I'm going to give you the telephone number and their address. It's Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports in Secaucus, New Jersey, 20 Meadowlands Parkway, 201-617-9000. How easy is that to remember? You remember Jersey, Boston, and 9000. 201, that's Jersey's uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. 617, that's Boston's exchange. Yep. And the 9000. Yes. A you toll know, free number. A toll free number, exactly. 201 617 9000. 20 Meadowlands Parkway, Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, located in Secaucus, New Jersey. Thank you so much. Thank you. That means out. Exactly. I got to do LA weight loss. Oh. One eight hundred four four eight trim. It's one eight hundred four four eight T R I M. It's L A Weight Loss. Yes. Yeah, I lost my weight on L A Weight Loss. Spring two thousand six. It'll be two years that I've kept my seventeen pounds off. I don't really much think about it anymore. You know, it's a way of life. I drink my water. I, I, you know, I try to eat properly. When I don't, I don't fret. Big part of the problem with people in weight loss is that they deny themselves the absolute things that they absolutely love. Why shouldn't you be able to have a mashed potato sometime? But then again, I'm not on the weight loss program anymore. Now, you get on the weight loss program. If you happen to be a carb lover, <coughs> I want you to know that you'll have a diet probably similar to how they made it up for me. Um, yeah. I had Look, let them explain to you how it works. Everybody gets an individualized weight loss program. They do it just for you. There's no prepackaged food. I was watching, and I hate to talk badly about another uh, weight loss program, but can I just say Nutrisystem? Mm. Okay, why are these mother fathers offering you seven days of food? They deliver it to your house. Because you know what that food is? That's that add water, and it blows up. I know. I was on that and failed Military years Military ration type food? Yes, oh. like that, exactly. Mm. The, the woman on the commercial on TV is talking about, uh oh, and they'll send you seven days of food to try. You don't want to be on weight loss programs like that. Come on, treat your body better than that. You might be fat, but you deserve to be comfortable while you're losing the weight. Give me a break. Eat real food. Come on over to the L.A. weight loss side of things. Eat real food for real people. No food group is off limits. And you'll be snacking more probably when you're on the program than when you are right now. With snacking with wild abandon. 1-800-448-TRIM. That's L.A. weight loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. None of these weight loss programs offer you a weight loss coach, a counselor, a shrink. 1-800-448-TRIM. Find out what millions of people and me already know. L.A. Weight Loss. It works. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us fan. Wendy Williams. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams. Experience. Experience. Yeah. Shout out to Adrian Lloyd again on the fax machine. He says, okay, uh, what is the problem with the coming of age party? Have you heard um, of the, and I'm not going to even butcher this name, but he says it's a, it's a name of a Japanese festival and the English translation is coming of age. It's held every year for all young people who turn 20, regardless of gender. 20 is a different age than 16 to me, Adrian. To me, you know, a 16 year old boy, um, you know, he's man enough to have a baby. And even if they reduce the drinking age to say 16, God forbid, he'd be man enough to have a drink. But he, that's not a man. So I don't really like the title coming of age because by and large, a 16 year old boy isn't handling man responsibilities. That's why. And I hear Susie John. I knew he'd have to get her on it. Hey, Susie. Dear Mrs. Hunter Wellington Carrington, oh yeah, the verdict is no longer out, by the way, and um, and we'll, we got what we needed, so that would be uh, Mrs. Mrs. Carrington, yeah, it's Mrs. Carrington. Anyway, the Susie crowd has a coming out party for an 18-year-old girl. No parties for an 18-year-old boy aside from the normal party. A girl doesn't come out at 16. Exactly. John, you're with me. She, he says that sweet 16 parties are for the nouveau. Mm. Like, I like those kind of parties for girls. But for boys, what do you, what do you call it? You know what? 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 
Now, if you want to have a party, that's one thing. But let's not give it one of those labels because you're not a man. You're not paying my bills. You're still not having sex up in my house. And you better report to school on time. Coming out. Mm. <laughs> Why not simply a 16th birthday party? Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Um, dear Wendy, do you have any pictures of your previous Dons and Divas events on your website? I would love to see how fly people can be. No, but you want to know what? I need to put some of those pictures up so you can actually see. You know, last year, the funny thing about the Dons and Divas extravaganza last year, and um, a young lady got in contact with me, as a matter of fact, one day last week via email, and she said, Wendy, there were some people that last year that were dressed like regular people. Yeah, well, I know, because you know what the Brigada did? The Brigada used our fabulous party as a time to gift their high rollers. So, you know, if you're a high roller, you might be in there with, you know, jeans and whatnot, and, but you're, you know, you're a high roller at the Brigada, along with whatever they give you, maybe a hooker for the night and a, you know, a free suite and a limo. They also give you tickets for, they, last year they gave you tickets for my Dons and Divas party. So anybody you saw walking around last year with regular clothes, they were gifted by the hotel. And I wasn't particularly down with that, but, you know. What could I do? The party was already in full swing. I already had my drinks going on. I was too lazy to get up and fight, you know? So, uh, but this year, it is in New York City, and it is at an extremely nice place. You will be pleasantly surprised when you find out. It is still shrouded in secrecy. I still can't say where it is, but I can tell you when. December 22nd in New York City. Um, we haven't started giving away tickets. The majority of the party will be given away. Um, there will be limited tickets available. Um, and my advice would be, as soon as we say that those tickets are available, if you if you really want to go, I would you know snap them up as quickly as possible. This is this is our sixth Dons and Divas ex Divas extravaganza in four years, and all of them have been very successful. And we've had them at some very wonderful places, from the Madison Square Garden to um, to like last year was the Brigada. Um, it has been at um, Capital, which is a fabulous place downtown Manhattan. I mean, just you know, just to name a few, um, the celebrity galore turnout and it's just a wonderful wonderful night and everybody this year we want to be dressed in black that's why it's called the black party yes. if you're in another color but black and even if you look fabulous i'm sorry but you won't be able to get into my party yeah. i'm sorry so please you know please don't try to be fly and you know, i'm gonna really stand out i want to wear a pink you know swarovski crystal gown you, well you look beautiful but you can't come into the party stand out. yeah you, you stand can't. outside Exactly. So, um, unlike any of the other Dons and Divas, this year is so exclusive. There's a very, very, very small limited amount of tickets. So you better jump on it now. No, you can't jump on it now. There are no tickets available now. Well, I mean, you know. When they become available. The email, get the emails going. Right. And so the official email address for the Dons and Divas extravaganza is Dons and, you have to write out the word and, Divas2005 at Yahoo.com. And to get more information, um, because that's a that's an email address that I gave you, Don's and Divas two thousand five at yahoo dot com. But you can always go onto my website, the Wendy Williams Experience dot com, to find um, more information about it. And then you know we're here every day, also, um, dear Wendy. I had a chance over the weekend to catch up on the missed episodes of Run's House. I find myself becoming really angry when I watch the show. Run himself is so obnoxious. His wife is whiny and lazy. I would very much like to give. One collective slap to all those children, especially the youngest daughter, Angela, I believe. She has one facial expression, sullen. Well, it shows one thing. Money may buy you all the material things, but it doesn't necessarily buy you happiness. The Jacksons aren't the only crazy black family with money. Have a great evening and how you doing? That's from Leslie. Yeah. Whiny and lazy. Hmm. That's how she described Mrs. Mrs. Run. Oh, by the way, um, 50 has apologized and expressed um, deep sympathy and sorrow to the family of the man who was shot and killed at the movie theater last week, opening night of his movie, Get Rich or Die Trying. Here's, he says, I feel for the victim's family in this situation, but you know, these weren't kids. 
This was a 30-year-old man who had a dispute with three guys. Yeah. Mm. I liked the movie. I mean, it was what it was. I liked it. Did you see Tyra Banks' E! True Hollywood story before that? That was a nice little lead-up last night to Desperate Housewives. And then Desperate Housewives was just fabulous last night. Then after that, I watched the BL version of um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Oh, boy. So it's official. People are really talking about Quentin Richardson, Brandy's ex-boyfriend, being being with uh, Keisha Knight Pulliam. Mm. I gotta go. I want to thank Jazzy Faye for coming in the show today. Thank you so much, CeeLo, for coming in the show today. Look for their collaborative effort. Their new CD will be in stores in February. It's called Jazzy Faye and CeeLo Green. That's it. They're a group. They got a CD coming out, and it's all good. And I, I want to thank you for being here today also. I love you for listening. God willing, we'll talk again tomorrow. Bye-bye. These party people. <laughs> See you later. What's I'm saying? Good night. Program complete. Hey, 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 everybody. <laughs> the bonus hour is up next, where we will delight and entertain you. We'll take your phone calls. We can gossip. We can do advice. We can do whatever it is you want. This is your time. 7.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, Back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40-something-year-old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Shout out to Princess Susie of the suburbs. Thank you, Princess, for thinking about us. Welcome back from your cruise. So, I was reading in today's newspaper about Kim Cattrall and her new sex book. And she has this sex documentary coming on HBO at 1030 tomorrow night. I'm going to watch it. The book is called Sexual Intelligence. And they say that it's the kind of book that would make even Dr. Ruth blush. The book features black and white photos of Kim Cattrall naked. But her limbs are artfully obscuring her, you know, the real deal. And um, the book explores the evolution of sexuality in the Western civilization through art and architecture, other visual expressions. She's looking for another acting job. Until then, she's going to ride the Samantha thing until the wheels fall off. She says, when I first started dating after my separation, it was really challenging because people felt that they were dating Samantha. Well, it doesn't help that Samantha's character is over, but you're still doing sexual stuff, Kim. But she's dating a man 22 years her junior. She's 49. This is what she says. There's a feeling of, hmm, she's older than me. She has experienced more. So sit back and relax. Instead of, oh, I should know this. I should govern this. I should be leading this. Hmm. She's 49. She looks great. Rounded off to 50. 
Or you ever been with a 50 year old? No, just 44 is the highest. 44. How was that? You knew her. It was nice. I did? Yeah, you knew her, you knew her very well. Write down her name. I forgot. I mean, you tell me so many names. Oh, gosh, easy. Write down her name. Let's talk to Larry on line three. He wants to ask about a Fantasia song. I'm already saying, I don't know, Larry. The crickets are already in my head. Hi, Larry. Hi. How are you? Very good. And yourself? Good. What, now, what about Fantasia? Oh, there was a song that played on uh, the show, the Wendy Williams show, just before Fantasia. I was looking for the artist and the name of the song. Uh, that would be in Goose's department. Goose's. Uh, was it Tony Braxton? Take this the ring. ring. Take this ring. Oh, that's Tony Braxton. Oh, Take it, this oh, ring off of me. A brand new. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, that's uh, besides tripping. I don't know this woman. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, no, no. She, <laughs> no, I'm she, sorry. I'm, Goose uh, is talking to you. I'm talking to Art. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it's Tony Black. You can have the yeah, note take back. I'm not going right to take the, the name. I'm not going to take okay. the... Okay, thank you, Larry. Thank you. Art, I'm not going to take the note and plaster it on the BLS bathroom. Can you just write down the name of the I'm person? I'm trying to remember myself. Oh, my gosh, you <laughs> slut. Or... <laughs> She's 44? What was that? Charity work? No. Did you really like her? Yeah, she was cool. She was built like a 20-year-old. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I remember her name. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she was slightly crazy. Yeah. And she had the, how you doing? The boyfriend. boyfriend who's the politician. Oh. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. She didn't look 44. No, she she could still throw her legs over her head and stuff, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Listen to Goose Chew. <laughs> <laughs> So Donald Trump Jr. got married. I like that he stays relatively low-key. Very low-key. So low-key, who cares? <sighs> Naomi Campbell is going to be on Tyra's show this week. They apparently met up at the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show last week. And, you know, they hugged and, you know, let in the feud. Tyra admits that she used to be terrified of Naomi for about 14 years. And Tyra's also said, yes, I have previously described Naomi as being hateful. But last week, the two of them embraced at the fashion show. And they will get together on Tyra Banks' show to display their friendship, their new friend, found friendship. And I actually said it was coming on this week, but um, it's not this week. I'm not exactly sure when it is. I like the Tyra Banks' E! True Hollywood story. That was on last night. I was watching it on the telephone. I was on the phone with my sister, and we were both watching. We were talking about other things, but, you know, Tyra was our muse. (laughs) Don't forget, this coming Saturday, hold on, Eva Langoria is... (laughs) 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 Is... Don't forget, this coming Saturday, Eva Langoria (laughs) is hosting Saturday Night Live. Oh, I need to get tickets from J.B. Smooth. Oh, you just want to be in the audience. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I need to be there. And the parties after the tapings are are legendary. That's where all the coke happens. Yes. Mm. Coca-Cola. Let's go to the phone, see what people are talking about. Which line what? Um, let me see. Well, I don't need line two, because JJ wants to know about the Bodylicious cruise, and I had to go to Miami, and Art went, so I don't need line two. Richard on line six wants to know what Art does as executive producer on the show. I don't quite have an answer for him. Exactly. <laughs> Richard, I don't have an answer for you. Richard? What does he do? <laughs> I, let me think. What does he do? I mean, I hate to make his job sound stupid, but and he, I don't want to hear no crickets. He gets my paperwork. What else do you do, Art? You facilitate what I, goes I, on. See, I get your coffee. <laughs> I run errands. I spit you on your shoes. I do your laundry. I iron your dresses. 
Yeah, I'm a man server. Call me Bentley. So he's the secretary? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, there, I'm there holding the toilet paper. Yeah, the bathroom. <laughs> well, no, he's, you know what? Art facilitates um, <laughs> the show. Harlem Hottie says, can you do me a quick favor and tell Artie I need to talk to him for a quick second? He knows where to meet me at. Where do you meet Harlem Hottie? She's um, one of my fans on my website. She's one of your what? Friends on my website. You said fans? He's going to be signing himself. Well, get to your website. Harlem Hottie needs to talk to you. All right. And to answer Richard, Goose, uh, to cut you off, Richard. I don't know why. I was about to explain. Um, Art, as executive producer of the show, facilitates between what goes on on the air as it relates to what is going on behind the scenes. You know, why am I reading copy for L.A. Weight Loss when L.A. Weight Loss, for instance, is not running this week? Mm. Art would go find out about that. Um, the best of shows. Art, I need the best stuff for the best of show. You know, blah, blah, blah. Can you get in there with Hollywood? Although Hollywood really is a one-man band right now at this oh, point. Oh, he's, 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 yeah, he's so I guess black. you don't do that anymore. I mean, I'm in here with him at times, but he's a, he's a one-man band. He does thing, yeah. Everybody's made everybody's job so much easier. Yeah. So I guess you could say nothing. Yeah, nothing. Mostly all Art does, Art sits here makes me laugh. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah, because you're not easy to make to laugh. So Yeah. Art Art sits right here next to me at the console. Yeah. He sits there with his computer board and presses the sound effects and and they even have big Sesame Street words on them. One of the girls could press the sound effects. Yeah, right, right. That's right. I make it easy for everybody. We we like having him around. We gotta keep him at least until he pays off four Brooks Brothers suits and fourteen shirts. Oh my gosh. All right, let's let's uh, pick up the phone blindly, ladies. There's a new bra. Hello, I'm uh, Sue Holden ha- and Angela Gaffney from Jersey City. Hi, Angela. It's Wendy here. Nice to have you here. Ah, uh, yes. I wondered. I heard the Color Purple song. I was wondering if I won the tickets for the Oprah Winfrey Color Purple show. No. No. Uh oh. What is that? Something going on here at the radio station? Excuse me. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh, hold on, Angela. Hold on, Richard. This is what Art comes in. Art. Is the radio station doing a contest with the color purple? Are you too embarrassed to talk so you don't want to say anything? Excuse me, one of the Girl Fridays was about to say. I think they were just advertising the show on the commercials. But okay, just advertisements, Angela. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Is Lisa still there on line one? Lisa? Hello? Is that line one? Yes. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Lisa? Fabulous, uh, Carrington. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She remembered my name. Fabiola Carrington. That was my name at the hospital when we delivered our son. Fabiola Carrington. That was, that was the name I checked in. <laughs> I've got such an imagination. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm well. Good. I just wanted to make a comment about this Dream Girls movie. Okay. Okay. No disrespect to Mr. Murphy. Why do they have Eddie Murphy with the kids? He's 45 and the rest of the cast is going to be 30 (laughs) years old. (laughs) And his character was supposed to be along the same age. So, I mean, who's the producer? They really need to. Why couldn't they throw a Tyrese or Usher in there? Yeah, I guess you have a good point then. <laughs> you know, the star power would have probably been the same. Really? Or, or more. People, well, people wouldn't flock for Tyrese the way they'd flock uh, maybe for Eddie Murphy. Although people do. When did they last flock for Eddie Murphy? I was going to say, do they still flock for Eddie Murphy? No. He has a fan base. <laughs> yeah, but he, has, he does have a built in fan base. Well. No. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling. All right. Be well. Bye bye. You too. So, ladies. Um, there's a new bra coming to town. It's called Warm Biz. Oh. And it's coming from Japan. Where the average cup size is a A minus. But these bras you can put in the microwave. Mm-hmm. See, I don't need to be that warm. And what about the underwiring? 
I used to take the underwiring out. I now wear it. I have an appreciation for, you know, them being able to stand up with nothing. I took, like, real advantage. After I got my breast implants, forget it. No bra, bra sometimes, no underwiring, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, I love bras. Like, I used to not care about them. Before the implants, I was lopsided, so I never really had the luxury to care about them. Because, you know, nobody made a bra with a B cup on one side and a fatty A on the other. You know? And then after I got the implants, it was like, bra, who needs that? Let me just throw on a piece of material so I don't frighten the room. You know? And go on about my business. But now I, I love, you know, beautiful bras and whatnot. But apparently this bra's pads are filled with eco-friendly reusable gel. Throw them in there. Not the whole bra, just the gel packs. They heat up in the microwave and um, or in hot water. And there's a long strap that flows. Now, get this. There's a long strap that flows down from the back which is meant to wrap around your neck like a boa. So in addition to your breast staying warm, you wrap this thing around your neck, and your neck stays warm, too. The bra is going to come with matching shorts. Great, so you heat that up. Nice yeast infection. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yuck. Nice warm smegma. Disgusting. All right, well, this is a flop. I just wanted to share it with you. Sounds like a lousy idea. You hear about the television show based on the Terminator movie? Do you guys care about that? Linda, well, you know, Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton's part. <clears throat> it's going to focus on her and her son, John, <clears throat> from the movie. This is what Variety Magazine is saying. And Variety Magazine is saying that... Um, there's the weight of the world right now on Linda Hamilton's body. I mean, Linda Hamilton's uh, shoulders, excuse me. Body, same thing. Um, and in the, in the, on the show, she'll be raising her 14-year-old son while trying to, you know, save the world. I don't care. What channel is this going to come on? Oh, excuse me. I take that back. In reading down, Linda Hamilton and Edward Furlong won't be in it. Well, Linda Hamilton, I mean, she's a little older now. Edward Furlong, he's still trying to kick drugs, right? Yes. He's like a junkie, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Loving them older women. Yeah. It doesn't say what channel it's coming on. Sci-fi, probably. I don't know. I don't know. Dondre Whitfield. Oh, show that man some love. Oh. <laughs> I never get tired of telling this story. <laughs> Clear the path. Coming through. Excuse me. Excuse me. Coming through. Coming through. Coming through. Got one of my favorite stories to share with you guys. Dondre T. Whitfield. <laughs> so Dondre um, is an actor. And he used to be on All My Children, and he also used to play Robert on The Cosby Show. You know him, black guy. Mm -hmm. And so Dondre came to the radio station about two years ago and gave Art the black man hug. That's, you know, when you shake, but then you pull in and you hug around. And Art felt something hard and big oh. <laughs> when, he, when he hugged Dondre. And he said... What did you say, Art? I didn't know he was happy to see me or, you know, he had something in his pocket. Uh, and so then he told you that it was a gun. Oh. <laughs> because he said, he, Dondre flew him from L.A. Mind you, at this point, he was married to Sally Richardson, but he was like, he was like, I'm back in New York, and, and you know, like somebody's chasing after Dondre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's got, this is the first time anybody's ever come up here. All the killers and hundred dollar billers that have ever come through here, to my knowledge, this is the first one with a damn gun, and he's all proud of it. It was a little cute gun, but he pulled it out and showed Art and held it up to the light and emptied the bullets and reloaded it. Oh, <laughs> easy! <laughs> it was a whole thing going on, a whole presentation. So now, Dondre. That's the story. So Dondre is joining the cast of the ABC sitcom Jake in Progress. Now, I thought that this show was totally canceled. This is the one with John Stamos. He's of Greek descent, you know. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
That's what I do as producer. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> What, you seen too many gums? No. It's, too much gums? It's almost like the Vincent Price looking <laughs> thriller. Very, very, you know, eerie. Mm-hmm. Halloween just passed. <laughs> Halloween came very early this year. Yes, yes. <laughs> Frightful, Wendy. Frightful, Wendy. Halloween came very early this year. <laughs> Thank you. So, Jake in progress on ABC. Dondre is going to play a recently divorced college friend of John Stamos. John Samus, of course, on the show, you know, is the superficial publicist searching for life's true purpose. Production on the show begins again this week. This week for a January premiere. So congratulations to Dondre Whitfield. I think that he and John Stamos are a great fit. I can actually not just see them being friends on TV, but I can see them being friends in real life. No jokes here. You, you, I, I like this. I like this fit. I like this idea. And I wish you well. Now, we never did download. This is one of the jobs as a producer. We should have downloaded the, the K-Fed rap. Kevin Federline? Yes. That's, that's his rap name, K-Fed? K-Fed, okay. I mean, if you can find it someplace, I don't know. But the song is called Y'all Ain't Ready. Oh, <laughs> In the meantime, Brittany says, I'm not helping. Ooh. I'm not collaboing. And she told him to get his career on his own. And she's made it clear to him that she's fed up with his constant partying and irresponsible ways, including the crazy spending. And she's threatened to divorce him if it all continues. And she showed what she meant oh, by canceling his credit card account. Trev Hollywood has the K-Fed record. Get it. Where is it? Where is he? Where is he? He's in his office. Email him. He's in his yes. office. Yes. Uh, um, hello, Trevor. How could you? Thank you, Risha. Why does Risha walk around with her bag like somebody's going to steal? I don't know. Isn't that a tight around here? Not that tight around here. She babysits for us. Be my babysitter. <laughs> that's what my son says. I know that's right. <laughs> he, he stays up in her lap. He's going to bring it. It's on a CD. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Hey, fans in the building. Yay. <laughs> that's what you were supposed to do. You were, all you have to do is connect dots. Yes, that's all I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> Goose, don't talk about a break until we listen to the K Fed song. Look, Goose. Goose already got the tray open. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to... Y'all ain't ready? Uh-oh. Y'all up. ain't ready? <laughs> oh, she cut off his credit card. They say his selfishness has reached the breaking point. Uh, Brittany, I don't understand what you expected, but you know what? Just lose your weight and move on to the next man. Let this bum... You know what? Leave him in the alley where you found him. Ooh. Shaw Jackson doesn't even want him back. I'm just saying... Where's I'm Trevor? He's on the way around. He's probably giving it to Risha. Why are they moving so slow? He's, oh, he said he'll. I, I told him to burn about next break. Just connect them more dots. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they're connecting more. Stay tuned, y'all. <laughs> okay, that's what it says on your computer. You know, that's what I'm saying. Stay tuned so they can hear after the break because he's burning it. All right. Yeah. How long is it? Ask him how long it is. I, I just want to know how long do we have to. He's listening. He is surprised me. Okay. Are there curse words in it? Does he have to edit and all like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Are you getting back to him? Yes, I'm, I'm doing my job. <laughs> 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 Ladies, I love heels. But um, they're saying, at, like they always have, that heels are no good for us. And here are five points that I just want to pass along to you all. And then you all do with this information what you want. I mean, me, I tell him, put that where back there. But what did he say? What's his response? He said it's about four minutes, and he's just, he's, he's reading. Four minutes of K-Fed? Ooh. Wow, we're going to play the whole thing. Yeah. We're going to play the whole thing, because I just want to know what all is are doing. What is he rapping about? And how does he sound? I bet he comes off like a wigger. Oh. Probably. Probably, yeah. And I wonder what his ad libs are like. No, I'm saying, yo, 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 <laughs> K-Fed in. I wonder if he says the or duh. 
Oh, See? Yes, yes. Kate said in the building. Stop it, white boy. Shout out to my baby's mom. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yo, we're listening to the whole thing. Ladies, here are the five points. If possible, this is from a podiatrist named Dr. Uh, Christopher Ferguson. If possible, avoid wearing heels higher than two inches because anything bigger puts a strain on your heels, on, on your ankles. Okay. Here's point number two. If you must wear a higher heel, restrict the time that you're wearing it to under four hours at a stretch. Okay. Number three, don't wear heels every day, especially pointed toe ones. They invite bunions and hammer toes. Number four, to reduce stress on your feet, ladies, wear flats to and from work. Save your heels for your office where you're mainly sitting and kick them off when no one's looking. And number five, get some inserts to reduce the pressure on the bottoms of your feet. Yeah, inserts are a must. I have them everywhere. I keep inserts in my car. I keep inserts in my husband's car. I keep inserts in Ms. Lopez's car. Hell, I have the inserts everywhere. Here at the office. Art, look what I hide underneath the desk. Oh, boy. Inserts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I keep inserts wow. everywhere. everywhere. Is there anybody online for? If, is this Tanisha Bowers? Yes, this is. Tanisha, you, uh, they say you're looking for your sister. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do tell. Um, well, I was at home and I got a phone call from my guy sister telling me that her friend was listening to your show and someone was looking for me. I think she said her name was Sharon or Sherelle. Um, some, oh, wait. Some you know what? That was last week. There was a woman from Nork. She's trying to connect the dots. You're adopted, right? Yes. 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 Somebody's looking for you. Mm-hmm. Art, what do I do with this information? Um, no, I just have reason to believe that that's my sister and that she was looking for me, but I don't have any way to contact her. So then one of my cousins from my adopted family have called me and told me that she had left an email address. But because I didn't catch the show, I wouldn't know. Oh, wow. So I want to know how, is there any way possible I'll be able to get in contact with her? Or like, did she leave some type of contact information? Like, how do I go about that? Now, well, she said the email on the air, and, oh, boy, that show is And nice. everybody who I know that listened to the show called me, came to my job. Like, they were really looking for it, but nobody caught the email address. Well, and I didn't write it down. Maybe you can leave your information, and then if she calls back, we'll give her the call. Yeah, you know what? Why don't we put you on hold? It's Tanisha Bowers, everybody. Uh, Why don't we... Already. <coughs> oh, you know what? Everybody email Artie at, uh... Oh, Arthur GM, is it, um... It doesn't cost them time. You don't think they have to pay no, no, to email no, you. No, no, no. At AOL.com. <laughs> Arthur J. Evans at AOL.com. And I'll connect the That's dots. That's who I have to email? Yeah, well, yes, because Art is the dot connector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Art is the executive producer of the show. And dot connector. And he do- connects the dots. Chief cooker, bottle washer. <laughs> so if you email Art, yes. and then if your family emails Art, then Art will... Connect the dots. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. I have an email address as well. Or, well, maybe your sister then is listening. You want to give out your email address over the radio? Yeah, sure. www.tbowers. At yahoo.com. T Bowers at yahoo.com. Yeah, underscore 83. I'm sorry. T Bowers underscore 83 at yahoo.com. Mm-hmm. So I have to go to Art or Arthur? Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> Arthur J. Evans. The, you put at J a- in there, right? Yeah, at AOL.com. At AOL.com. Okay. I didn't know I was on the air. Oh, well, yeah. Are you upset? No, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm more of a private person. 
Well, your sister called and put you on blast. She called what? She called. Uh, we put her on the radio. Oh, well, I didn't know. I didn't even know she called. Yeah, no, it's okay. But this is a wonderful thing, especially this time of year that you, you know, you might possibly be able to be reconnected before Thanksgiving. You excited? I don't know what to feel right now. Yeah. That's a, uh, I guess it's pretty, I don't know, maybe, a, I guess a touchy situation. Mm. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm about to be 22, the 22nd of this month, so. Yeah. yeah. So what's your situation like? How you living? Who you living with? I'm fine. Yeah. Do you, got, do you have great friends? Yes, I do. Chef's I was adopted by a wonderful family. Oh, you know what? Oh. We don't know the date of the show. Do you do you remember the date of the, that the show? The date that it aired, it was the uh, twelve. Are you sure? Um, no, it could have been eleventh. It was this past Friday. Was, I don't even know. The that, date, was the date. that was the eleventh. That was the eleventh. Okay, the eleventh. That that was on Friday. You said. Yeah, it was Friday. A Hollywood, it was Friday aired. the eleventh. But can you look for this lady's adoptive information after you prepare K Fed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. And you know what? Okay. And so, oh, and he said, okay, okay. All right. So you keep in touch with Art through email. We okay. are going back and getting the, in, we'll go back and get the information. That was during advice hour, I believe. And okay. then Art will then have your sister's um, email and then you guys can get together. Okay. How, how, how long has it been since you've seen her? I've never seen her. This is your blood sister? I would, I would like to believe so. And you were all adopted out from, like, an orphanage or something? No. Uh, from what I've known, it was, um, she was living with my grandmother, mm. my birth grandmother. I don't, um, I know my father was an older man. It, it really doesn't matter how it went down, but I was born November 22nd. I was adopted. I had my birth certificate. I was already with my adopted family mm. um, by December 4th. So I never met her. I never met any of them. Mm. But one one uh, one of my sisters, my youngest. So even after you get the information, you don't know what you want to do with it yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I do want to contact oh, them. okay. Yeah, I already met one of them. And um, it's funny because I was, I've heard that we all live in Union County, which is really odd. Wow, that's, crazy. That's because crazy. Union County isn't that big. Yeah, you could have seen each other over the path, Mark, several times. You never even knew. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I wish you well. Art's going to connect the dots because that's what he does. And thank you for calling, Tanisha. I appreciate it. I never saw anything like this happen. It's kind of weird. Well, listen, weirder things have happened. You should step inside my Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I take it as a blessing. So thank you. It is. It is. Take care. All right. I'll keep in contact with you, Arthur. Take, take. No, Arthur, not author. If you spell it author, you're not, you're not going to his website. Oh, I'm not. No, it's, 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 it's A-U. Art. No, no. Oh, Art, A-R-T. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. All right, Tanisha Bowers. Take All care. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I guess this is probably where we should take a break. I'm really excited for Trev Hollywood to... Now, what is he going to email blast you? No, he's going to bring the CD in here. Oh. And then Goose is going to connect that dot. <laughs> well, can you stay in contact with Goose to make sure that all the dots are connected? I got you. I'll, I'll talk to Goose as soon as we go into Cabrera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur J. Evans Esquire. Yes. <laughs> Goose is such a sophisticated way of talking. <laughs> Kills me. Look, we're going to break. We'll be back. Vaughn comes up at 7 o'clock with The Quiet Storm on, on 107.5 WBLS. What's up, y'all? This is Charlie Wilson, and you listen to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Okay. Mm. I was eating a fireball. <laughs> hey, Hollywood, where's the K Fed? Come on, come on. Don't make the only great thing about Mondays growing up gaudy. I love that show. I'm watching that tonight. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say about Murder, Inc. and, and the Gotti brothers and Guy Griff. Um, if you understand a bit of the story and Fat Cat and all like that, then I guess that movie Get Richard Die Trying wasn't just entertainment, but 50s version of the tale. You know, that's one man's version of the tale. 
with that, a little bit of creative license. Yes, with some creative license. How do you think Joy Bryant did? I thought she did well. She's I mean, really you know, she's, she's an official actress. Right? Yeah, she's an actress. Mm. Let's go to the telephone. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. <laughs> oh, snap. They were listening to Welcome to Brooklyn. I only need to hear a little bit of it in the background. That was Welcome to Brooklyn. Hello. Uh, Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Listen to your show every day. Love it. I, I even got my mother, who's like 55 years old, down south to listen to you on the internet now. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for listening. I mean, thank you for doing your show so we can listen. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Wendy? Yes. No, I had a question. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm uh, in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. Never dated anybody my age before. They've always been older. Mm -hmm. And I just recently met someone who's 21. Oh. Uh, very interesting conversation. Um, hung out a couple times, played tennis, you know, went to dinner, had mm -hmm. drinks and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm really apprehensive about moving forward because I just got out of a relationship a couple months ago that was a couple years long. And I'm just really like, are we meeting each other on the same level, the same playing field? I've been out of school, out of college for a couple of years now. They're still in college. And I'm just like, I feel kind of like less than a person. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm well, going outside of myself. Well, I mean, first of all, because you're dating younger, but also you were just, you just, you've only, it's only been two months since your last serious relationship. Yeah. Have you explained this to this woman? Uh, it's a guy. Uh, well, you know what? I just tried to trip you up because you said, you said. Um, a person, yeah. Yes, exactly. That's a word for how you doing. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you know. Yeah. You know what? Explain to him. You just got out of a relationship two months ago. You are nowhere near trying to get locked down and something. No, 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 no. It's been more than two months. We were in a relationship for, for about three years. Yeah, but you've been, been, but you just got out of that relationship two months ago? No, it's been off and on, but we're we're done. We, we've been done for months. Okay, for months. I mean, the easiest way to not make this relationship go really fast is to not have sex with the dude. No, nah, that's not even happening. That's not even an issue. Because you've already had sex? No, we haven't. Oh, yeah. Walk slow. You know, solidify your friendship first. Find out where his maturity is, too. I mean, you're 26, but... but now, you, the maturity is there, and it's okay. really odd because people have always told me, oh, you got an old soul, old spirit, and this is the first time I've met somebody who I can say that about. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, what so you, how do you feel? What, what's your advice on that? I, I mean, my advice is to take it slow. It's I know it sounds so generic, but it fits. You know, what's that? Take it slow. Don't do anything crazy like, you know, obligate to, you know, spending Thanksgiving or Christmas. No major holidays because that sends mixed signals. Right. No New Year's Eve. That sends mixed signals. New Year's Eve is fine if you're all in a big group. Don't go for that. You know, you kiss him the first one at midnight. You don't kiss anybody. Kiss yourself. Be in the bathroom at midnight. Right, right. And then, you know, after New Year's Eve is Valentine's Day. You know, I don't know whether you're in, you know, whether you're ready about that time. But if you're not, stay away from formal holidays. Right, right. Okay. No. Yeah. So I'll just take it slow and just see what happens. Take I don't have anything. I'm like the kind of person who no expectations, you don't get hurt. Yeah. Know, so. to, to, well, I mean, you know, you, it, with love comes hurt. That's why they call it falling in love. Ow. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. And it took me a minute to get over it. So now I'm like, do I really want to put myself through that again, especially with somebody who might not be as mature or ready for that? You know, that, especially in the life, it's just like a whole lot of different stuff that comes up. That's know? what gay people always say, but I, I got to tell you something. Heterosexuality is a mess, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> I, I have a lot of straight friends who just go through it, you know. Yeah. In their 30s and are like, damn, you know, biological clock is ticking. This, this guy's not acting right. So right. So forth, so. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I wish you well. Thank you. And uh, thank you for listening, and your mom, too. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I'll take somebody else. Um, yes. Oh, wait. Hold on. What line is that? What lo line is this, Chloe? She's off? Okay. Hi. Hello? Hi, Wendy. I'm your little sister from my clan. I was having problems with my daughter in school. Yada, yada, uh -oh. yada. That she's going to get kicked out of school. Remember that? Oh, yes. And the note says that you want to talk to me behind the scenes. Yeah, just really quick. I just need your advice or whatever. My daughter, father or whatever, I've been in relationship with him for like 11 years. I'm trying to make it short or whatever. But I, I'm, I don't 
feel sexually involved with him no more, but he always wants sex or whatever. But I can't even see myself just having sex with him anymore. But I'm so totally in love with someone else or whatever for the past six years or whatever. Oh, whatever. But he doesn't really want to get too involved because he knows the situation oh, with my daughter's father. Mm-hmm. So I need your help. Does your daughter, I mean, do, do you and your daughter and the father, do you all live together? I have two daughters. I have the daughter that's 15 that I was having problems with, and then I have a three-year-old. Okay. Which, which father is this? This is um, the three-year-old father, but she has the, the, the guy has been in my daughter's life for like ever since she's been five years old. Okay, so she but, look at him as a father. Okay, the father, the, the man that wants to sleep with you, why can't you just tell him no and mean no, or whatever? I mean, this is this is my daughter's father, though. I'm living with him right now. I'm not the, financially sick. <laughs> Set where I can just up and leave. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, then you need to be firm with your no, and then you need to get your money together so that you're living, you know, sans him, without him. You know what I mean? So if I don't, I don't have sex with him or whatever, then he's thinking, you know, I'm like, how you doing or whatever. I'm fuck. He he can think whatever he wants. Huh? He can think whatever he wants. I mean, that you know, you're your own person or whatever. All right. Thank you so much, Wendy. I love you. You're welcome. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, she called um, like two weeks ago. She's got a plethora of problems. She's got this 15-year-old daughter who, by her account, is absolutely unruly. And I you know, tried to help her with the daughter. And you know. K-Fed is in the building. Doggone it. I, and I was all distracted. Damn, I'm a shit. Oh, say, keep a damn name out your mouth. They call me K-Fed. But you call me Daddy instead. Where's the other? I thought it was four minute. minutes. That's it. No, I, I said I thought it was going to be about four minutes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Minute one Who produced the beat? I mean, there's a, a, there's a whole wackalicious thing going on there, from the beat to his delivery, to his Mac 10 fake accent, back then. Yep, that was the wigger delivery. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, Brittany, I wouldn't support it either. As a matter of fact, I'd divorce him. <laughs> I would divorce him. Despite. Yeah, just for putting out some whack mess and making a laughing stock of young Sean, the new baby. So, um, Brad Pitt has told Angelina Jolie, there will be no wedding until you make up with your father, John Voight. The other day, we were trying to figure out, I couldn't for the life of me. I, yeah, John Voight is the one who's dating uh, Diana Ross. Because Art said, is that Angelina Jolie's father? And I said, I don't think so. Yes, it is. It is. Brad is tired of them fighting back and forth. He feels as though the whole thing is nonsense. What are you really fighting with your father about? Um, I'm not going to marry you, Angelina, until you make up with your father. This is ridiculous. You know, you know, we have children, yada, yada, so on and so forth. You're a different person now. And she says, that'll never happen. So I guess they won't be walking down the aisle. That's an easy out. Say, that's an easy out. You know, you challenge somebody to something that you know that they won't do, and then you don't have to marry them. Smart. Did you guys see the Jennifer Aniston movie over the weekend? How'd she do? The one that they needed to have released right now was the one where she's with Vince Vaughn. Just to, you know, I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Because now they got to keep that stupid little relationship that they got going on. they got to keep that up until it's released in February. And by then, the, the, her relationship with Jake Gyllenhaal will be discovered in, in, in everyday news for everybody. I don't know that they're having a relationship, but in my, own, in my mind they are. I read their body language when I saw them on the red carpet through TV. Oh, wait, before I go, I want to remind you of a little something. This coming Friday, WBLS and the New York Food Bank uh, for the Triborough Food Drive are looking for food. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., we're looking for the WB... Excuse me, you guys can come to the WBLS street team at the Pathmark of Atlantic Center. That's on Atlantic Avenue. And um, that's from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then they're going to be over at the Pathmark of Queens on Springfield Boulevard and the Pathmark of Harlem. You know what? No telling what time the street team is going to be at these various places, but you can go on our website. Friday is the date. They'll be out all day for 12 hours driving between these three path marks. Go to the website, WBLS.com. What we'll be looking for you to do is to drop off your 
um, non-perishable food items to help the people of the New York Food Bank. You know, winter is right around the corner. It's going to be cold, and uh, people will be hungry. <laughs> the way it starts. Listen to the way it starts. <laughs> Look at Lawrence Welk to do with the bubbles. Do it again. <laughs> so, this is so funny. Oh, gosh. All right, you all luck. We got to go. You, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bonds up next with the quiet storm. Uh, don't forget about the gong show tryouts tomorrow night from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Laugh Factory, 8th Avenue and 42nd Street in Times Square. Come with your best singing, rapping, freak game. You know, the gong show used to be back in the day. That's exa exactly, that's exactly how we want to make it. Whatever it is that you can do. Even if you can do, like, remember how Bernadette on Zoom, she'd go like this. I'm right, Bernadette. She'd go like this. I mean, whatever it is that you do, the crazier it's better. Come on, it's the Wendy Williams Experience gong show. So, you know, please. <laughs> the, the freaky other the better. <laughs> Tomorrow night from 6 to 8 at the Lab Factory, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. That's tryouts for our gong show. Then we're going to do the big presentation, and the rest of everybody will be invited, too. Okay, bye. Love you. Bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast.